think it's working. Let me know how it looks, how it sounds. Probably a bit windy. So, here is the famed Denmore Theatre where I saw Motorhead, countless other bands. First band I ever paid to see there. First gig I ever paid to see. And that was President of the United States of America. <laughs> Supported by Jebediah and Custard. Yeah, he's just up here to the right. A little bit more lively than Emu Plains, eh? Alright, I can see a chat now. And here he is! Open. Sun. Yamaha, I've got one of them. Ding ding! Hello, mate! What's up? Get on. Oh, looks the parts, mate. Looks the goods. Vox. Lots of Vox. Yeah. Box. Oh shit. <laughs> and an orange. You actually cleaned up all your crates for me. I feel uh, privileged. <laughs> <laughs> I'll have the pink one. Yeah. <laughs> well, the keys light up. Just press oh yeah? The keys, oh that's right. Up. Have you seen the video of them teaching a chicken how to play piano? <laughs> <laughs> it just pecks whichever key lights up and it plays nice. a song. Alright, we've got pedals. He does Earthquaker. Do you want to just run us through everything, eh? I'll just put my shit down. Hang on. You guys can stare at strings for a minute. Uh, we still got 5G. Oh, look at that. Yeah. Alright, there's that. Sweet. Uh, Holy uh, sick, bro. Alright. Gonna start at the start. Alright. We go clockwise. Ooh, I spy something old. Very old. Yeah, what year is that? Uh, uh, late 60s, early 70s. I've got a, uh, did you see that 17, uh, the 1800, yeah. 1890? That thing, when it's back together, is worth a uh, yeah. lot, sir. That's what I'm worried about. Yeah. <laughs> I've got to be very careful with it. <laughs> you know, hide glue only on that one. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but uh, I had one from the 1600s once, and it was like, Didn't the wood was that dry. It was yeah. just sort of, it became archaeology at that point, <laughs> not, not, not luthierish. Yeah, no thanks. Yeah. I'll pass on that one. So start us in this corner. So that's where I basically put the stuff to hook the people in the door. Yeah, cool. All right. So we sell a lot of used equipment, a lot of secondhand stuff, and that comes in from Japan via the pallet load. Yep. When I get interesting things, it goes up in that section. Mm. And then here is one of the walls of guitars. Once the um, uh, once old mate comes along and installs more of that on the other side of the shop, oh, that yeah. section's going to be an amp room and big the, chunky stuff. The grid wire. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. That's your stuff here, champs. It's like slap wall. You just screw it to the wall. Mm. And uh, yeah, so this is all second handers, eh? No. Nope. Or a mix. Mixture. So oh, yeah, it's kind of so like got, the uh, Ashtons, the Cheapies, yeah. Tanglewoods there. Prattley guitars coming soon. Yeah, I saw that uh, oh, yeah. today. Yeah, I've, I've been asking the rep to bring something out, but he's been ignoring me. So. <laughs> <laughs> On it, yeah, look, they, they kind of are like that. Even with me, despite like I used to do like 15, 20 grand a month yeah. with them. And even then, unless, it's, unless yeah. you're a big fish, you sort of get. Oh no, he's just he's a, he's very aloof, mm. that kind of thing. But yeah, so secondhand acoustics there, and then secondhand electrics in this section. So some real cool stuff. Um, you know, for example, one of my personal favourites, and I hate Les Pauls of the Passion, <laughs> Yamaha SL700S. Ah, yeah, nice one. One of the one of the reasons why they why Gibson and Fender almost went out of business is unlike the um, 
turds they were putting out. They made out of good wood. <laughs> yeah. The stuff was in the right spot, and they didn't have to put an extra pickup ring around the pickups <laughs> to cover up the routing issues. <laughs> the goof rings, as they call them. Yeah. Plus, this one's kind of neat because it's actually got a slightly wider fretboard. And it doesn't have uh, fret, fret nibs. No. Nah. Binding nibs, I mean. And for a guitar of this era, push hey, push pots nice. on both pickups. Cool. So that's just coil tapping, yeah? Yep. Sweet. Pickups look like super distortions, but they're um, actually slightly less output. Yeah. So they're quite quite nice for that. Mm. Stuff like that. 70s Fernandez. Ooh, nice. Yeah. Yeah, I've got a few fans of Fernandez. Yeah, uh, good stuff. Yeah. Some domestic market. Jackson. Nice. Made specifically for a music shop in this colour with this um, hardware combo. So. Yeah, right. All the, all the prog kiddies these days love the Charvels with the non-locking trim and all yeah. that kind of stuff. They were but, doing it for the Japanese market 20 years ago. Yeah, that's why I got the FGNs in. You know, yeah. the, the hardtails. I used to sell them. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> used to. No comment. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, this, this is kind of cool because it's got the, um, the, cr- the brushed chrome yeah. finish on there. And it's in the metallic perloid seafoam green. Yeah, that's tasty, it's man. So... Yeah. Made in Japan, made Chushingaki. Yeah. So good quality stuff. And then, like, another sort of parallel thing the grandpa's guitar for those mm. who play a bit heavier. Yeah. <laughs> That's a Charvel. Made, once again, same factory, Chushingaki. So, a lot of people Bless are you. familiar. Yeah. <laughs> a lot of people are familiar with the um, Charvel Surfcaster. Oh, this yeah. was a parallel model, but it was based on the Strat, the dinky type thing. Mm. And yeah, it's just. Hollow body. Yeah. Wow. Semi-hollow. I like the, uh, stuff. the contour there is nice. Yeah. Well, that was common on all the um, Jackson stuff and eventually the Caparison stuff took it on because the company that did Jackson in Japan um, separate, didn't renew the Jack- Jackson license and started Caparison. Mm. So, yeah, mm. Stuff like that. And, nice and, strat there. Love the yep, wood. That's a bitzer. Bitzer. Yeah. All strats are, aren't they? Well, this one especially, because <laughs> they... Um, get to a certain age. Well, it's a, it's a 64 reissue Tokai neck. One, yep. of the, one of the bits of the qu- uh, kit that um, oh, made yeah. Fender go, let's get to the Japanese market and make them build guitars for us. Yep. But the body is a different Tokai model that used to be 3 bolt. Oh, right. Mm. Okay. So, so nice a few, a few nice little hits. Yeah. It's good. Yeah, you can see at the back there where the um, extra bolt was. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Ah, everyone loves a bitzer, that's what they're for. That's why yeah. I can take take the bits off. Solid, solid bit of kit in that. Yeah. Cool. And then, of course, crazy, crazy basses and Ibanezes and whatnot. I'm trying not to trip over stuff while I'm <laughs> <laughs> filming. <laughs> uh. This thing is the bass that everyone obsesses over. Yeah. Nobody's bought it yet. Yeah. It's funny that, eh? People go, oh, that's mad. And everyone talks about the one thing and no one pulls the trigger on it. (laughs) But this one is a 75-ish PB750N, which is all maple, pancake body, that's also multi-piece. Yeah, Jesus. Weighs a ton, but this is kind of like the bastard child of a Gibson and a P-Base. So the P-Pickup is closer to the neck. Ah, yeah. For more. It's a bit more bass. The bridge pickup's a humbucker. Yeah, right. Yeah. It's tiny. And it's, it's teeny tiny humbucker back too. right against yeah. the butt. So you get Man, those that just space thick out. when you mix them together, right? Yeah. yeah. It's yeah. like that it's it's like a P base meets a Gibson E B base. Yeah, right. So the bridge pickup is way low output versus the neck, but oh, you mix yeah. them together and it gets that kind of like mm. slightly out of phase tone. So that's just volume volume or is it master volume, volume tone. master tone? Yep. Right, okay. And then switch. Yeah, right. <laughs> Shit. Yeah, it's kind of kind of weird but cool for that kind of thing. And then if you want to do something really geeky and play like a nineties tribute band. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Look at that colour. Yeah, but, it's uh, almost like it's trying to be the um what do they call it? The uh Defender Antigua Burst. Yeah, Antigua, that's it. It's yeah. it's like Antigua Burst and meets a uh, avocado. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Hey avocados are expensive, man. Oh yeah. <laughs> you got the seven string up there because you're a genty boy down by heart. <laughs> Look, just because I own four of them. <laughs> oh, I have too many strings, I can barely handle six. <laughs> so we're doing Vox. We're doing Yep. Uh, Fox and TC. I keep getting asked about uh, multi effects processors. Mm. I don't carry at the mo- any at the moment, so I just send them to you. Yeah. You got the uh, the tube screamer. Of course. Yep. You gotta have it. I've got. To, I still gotta get that bloody video out that I did on the TS9 as well. Oh, the comparison. Yeah, yeah. Nice. The Ibanez. 
Yep. And Earthquake, I guess yep. Earthquake would be a big draw, eh? People always looking for him. Yes and no. No? No. It, it's one of those things where, as you know, you move you move a location at times, it takes time for people to know. Yeah. Eventually, more people will come in to check that kind of stuff out. But So they're made in Ohio, aren't they? Yep. Yeah, that's the uh, hometown of our, our man, Karen Murphy. He's in uh, Ak- Akron, I think yeah. it's called. Yeah, Akron, Ohio. Yeah, that's, yeah. Uh, that's, that's, where, that's where they're from. Yeah, right. It's just down the road. I hope he deals them. Mm. It's silly not to. We've got the old uh, pedal boxes down here, the power power stages. Yep. So is that a, is that 100? Oh, 120? 170? 170. 100, 2 by 700. Bloody hell. Yeah. <laughs> just little uh, Class D bastards just mm. pumping juice out. That, like that no one's Noah business. one, though, the baby bomb. Oh, this thing? Yeah, that's what, that's what I've been playing with. Yeah, years. right. What, 30 watts? Dude, that thing yeah. there, I didn't even need to turn it past three, uh. and I could hear myself on stage yeah. headlining the um, crowbar. Yeah. Jesus. They've got good oh. monitors, though. Huh? <laughs> They've got good monitors, though. Fair no, play. No, even on stage. Oh, okay. Like, just the stage yeah. down. In a, in a room with a drummer and with another guitarist and a bass player and that, it yeah. holds its own. It's stupid loud. Check out these little buggers. There's barely enough room to fit the pots in the things. It's crazy, isn't it? And then you match, but you match that up with the matching cab. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Literally, Literally eight, matching. Eight, it's got... Yeah. The oh, it's got the, on top. It's got a little hole for it. <laughs> it's a little home. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Man, that is a... Uh, that's like the, the text you'd finish, but it's like they're using the last bit of the barrel and it's just <laughs> it's coming out like dregs. Yep. It's, a, uh, it's the money shop paint job, we call it. <laughs> <laughs> nice. 200 watts, 8 ohms, take 2 of them, yeah, tear it up into that, and, you're done. and yeah, it tears down the walls. It was kind of funny, I actually took that head and I plugged it through the tube. Oh yeah, <laughs> that's the sun, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So how are the speakers in this, they were good? Yeah, they're good. Yeah, that's they're good condition, 160 watts handling. That's the sun, 2x15, 4 ohm chucha. Yeah. So that's with the, was it the Coliseum head or the concert head? Concert. Concert, concert right. base, yeah. Okay, cool. I saw your post about that. Have yep. you, you've uh, restored that one yet or still working on it? Still working on it. Still waiting for caps to arrive. Ah, the old cap. Oh, that was the uh, axial ones, wasn't it? Yeah. And Joy. So hard to fit them in. They're so spaced out. So I'm just gonna, I'm gonna bite the bullet and get the other ones. So. Yeah. The V shays. Oof. Got some pickups there. More than a few. Man, you're making my shop look like an empty, stupid shit shell. <laughs> <laughs> One's just a place to hang out, really, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, have you got all like the PA equipment that I'm not interested in because yeah. I don't like to hurt myself? You don't like to make 10% margin, 5% margin, 0% margin? Yeah. <laughs> See, when I do that kind of stuff, I sell it, I make no money on it, but I make the money on the service of the installation. Yeah, true. It's That's the only way you can on that. I stuff. was thinking about going more towards that uh, until we couldn't get any mixes because of the, uh, the semiconductor shortage. So. Mm-hmm. Which has started easing off. It started easing, on. but um, mixes with uh, DSP chips in them is still still a thing. I, yeah. I don't know if they're even going to ever catch up. I, I don't know. What have we got here? Some uh, restored stuff. Yep. This, so. is, this is for the nerds. Sampling keyboard. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> a glorious total of two seconds of sampling. <laughs> Oh, PCM. Get some lo-fi stuff. Woo, PCM. You pair, pair, you, you take that, and then you take the porter sound underneath it, oh, yeah. which is like a two-operator FM, but you've mm. also got the ability to turn it on to a, um, a, a modifiable patch and use the sliders on the side that oh, yeah. correspond to God knows what <laughs> to make your own kind of sounds. That's wicked. And the little dinky keys. Yep. <laughs> little teeny tiny things. <laughs> That's cute. Yeah, we've got that. We've got, um, yeah, got electrobes. A full yeah. set of them. Sweet. Which is good fun. And then, of course, for the nerds, yep. hi fi gig. Got a lot more of that coming soon. TP47. Mm. That's got the uh, the sensors for the um, the record size there to yep. determine the speed. Yep. High tech, mate. Push yep. button. And then the older brother. Yeah. Oop. Don't want to crack your lid. You know how hard it is to find turntable lids these uh, days. Seriously. <laughs> Even the uh, the aftermarket ones are like mm. 150 bucks plus shipping. Yep. Yeah. So these are gonna get um, refurbed and then put up for sale. Nice. Check the, check the condition of the cartridges and that. Yep. And the alignments and whatnot. Yeah, you can pretty much pop anything on these days. The Audio Technica ones are good. Mm. That's what I do. And uh, Autophon. And we've got a couple of 
interfaces and stuff down here. Yeah, recording. Yeah. Sorting out some new brands and whatnot for that kind of thing, but seriously, this industry does my head in. Just trying to just trying to talk to people is a nightmare. <laughs> seriously. But then if you for something like kind of um, you know, for those who are real sort of nerds. Yeah. Hey, it's got fired up. Yeah, man. Yeah. It'd be good if we could play. <laughs> uh, well, I'm still, still going fin- to finish doing the key action on it because it's yeah. sticky. Oh, yeah, we've got one. And it's out of tune. Got one down a bit, yeah. yeah. So, this is the one that uh, Cold Chisel used quite a bit. The entire album, yeah. East, top yeah. to bottom. East, yeah, right. Mm. Well, there you go. Fly Girl and Cheap Wine, that's the sound. Yeah. And whenever they went out and played live, it was one of these. I've just got someone asking, anyone have an idea if things are going to proceed into live? I don't know what that means as far as I knew we were live. <laughs> do you want to um do you want to just check on your phone that we're streaming alright? Or on your computer? Yeah. He's got the Apple, he's an Apple boy. And this is works for him. There's twenty seven people watching, so we can't there's some product placement. They should uh they should send me free stuff. <laughs> they should send me free stuff to fix no, this. They'll, they'll probably turn around and say, Now you owe us money. Yeah. Fix his Android with a shit lens. So I bought this camera. The... Oh, oh, that's, oh, that's my horrible voice. There we go. We're good. We're good. Hey, so we've got what seven minutes till close, and uh, I don't know. Do you want to? What's out the back? Have you got a workshop here? You don't do. Nobody's there. That's at the. Um, <laughs> that's at the uh, other address, isn't it? Yeah. Your workshop. How Pretty far much. is that from here? Uh, like walking wise, about ten fifteen. All right. Yeah. Out the back is basically a pile of all the, old amps all the, and all the stuff that you've and that I've still got to process. All the stuff you moved out of the way so the shop looks good. No, no, it's the stuff that I'm still going to get to the workshop. Ah. There's like some really weird old cool Japanese amps in there including that um, Ace Tone Mighty 5 with the weird tubes in it. Oh yeah. Is that those Acorn ones or the... No, the big, the uh, Magnoval ones. Oh, the, the, the Compactrons. 50s. 50, um, was it 50HB26 or something? Yeah, they're Compactrons, aren't they? No. Oh, no? No, no Compactrons are a different thing. Oh, that's Magnoval. The Magnoval. Yeah. I don't know what that is. Magnoval <laughs> is another type of Noval that's bigger than a standard uh, oh, okay. A socket. Yeah, right. I didn't ever claim to be a tech or anything. I'm just, <laughs> I'm just a YouTube personality. <laughs> I'm just, I, I just, I, I know too much dumb shit. You're like, doc, uh, you're, you're, uh, Dr. Gear, but you're also Rain Man. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. It's got these custom picks. Look at that. Hells yeah. And then I got the ones that I have made just for myself. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Same thing, but in a um, one mil Jazz 3. Uh, Jazz XL, sorry. That's fancy. Yeah. I like the sharper tips. Mm. I wear them off playing thrash metal, though, so... Yeah. <laughs> exactly. That's why, that's why I buy them in quantities of a thousand. I've yeah. still got about 600 left. Yeah, right. I should get some Brandon picks, eh? Hey? Where'd you get them? They look like a Tortex, like a nice... Yeah, they're yeah. Dolren. Delver and yeah, that's yeah. the one. You can you can just get them through um, AMS. AMS, okay. Yeah. I'll uh, I'll flick them an email because mm-hmm. that would be cool. Well, throw a few in with uh, with repairs, that kind of thing. That's what I do. I basically get one of each color and throw it in there and bam. Now, the first thing that struck me when you started putting up photos of the shop was yeah. how how good the lighting is. All this was pre-existing, was it? Yep. That's mad. It's got such a good look on the instruments as you mm-hmm. walk in, especially at night. And this, and this is exactly why I wanted this shop, because I'm pov. I can afford to fit out. I want yeah. something I can just walk in just and go, bang. beautiful. Grid wire, bang. That's exactly yeah. it. And didn't you score these these uh, benches from somewhere? I yeah, I remember. Yeah, those free. You just... just I got, uh, I've got two more out the back, too. They just had a shop fit out, the door was unlocked, you just went in and took them. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> Yoink! Oh, that easy. Yeah, big borrow steel, they say. <laughs> no, was, and they were um they were out at a uh, Pimble shopping centre. Oh, yeah. And they were used for um like casual leasing there. Yep. But then apparently they didn't need them for something or whatever. They got used like twice and then they like got rid of them. Yeah, right. Yeah. That's just like a promo thing or something. Well it's like when people go there and they set up to sell like, I don't know, Nutramedics or some dumb shit. <laughs> <laughs> Drumsticks. Yeah. I was thinking about getting drumsticks, but I've been asked like twice in three years. <laughs> so, well, it's one know. of those. It's see, you do that thing as well, where you like you get stuff going. I have to have this because people ask for it, and then they never do. I yeah, did that. True. I used to do that exact same thing. Now I take note of what people ask for and go, okay, can I also sell it online? And will it like not cost me a huge amount of money to just have sitting around? Yeah, 
you know, drumsticks. I, I've actually just placed an order in um, a few days ago for a restock on the Vaders because I've run out of 5As. Oh, yeah. I've got 5Bs, but no 5As. Yeah, 5As, like 5 and 7As, they were the ones, the big boys. Oh, they're the big boys, aren't they? No, they're the um, Abe Cunningham Cool Breezes, the Deftones guy. Ah. Mm. Old mate. We sell a lot of the, um, the Vader 908s, which are the... Um, uh, what's his name? Do the dude who replaced Joe Jordison in Slipknot? Oh yeah, his signature sticks. A lot of those, a lot of five A's, just standard five A's. Um, junior sticks as well. Little teeny mm. tiny drumsticks for kids. Yeah. Sweet. Mm. I um I wanted to get some yeah like bongos. See mini bongos. Yep. I love giving um instruments like this to my to my friends that have kids. Because it pisses them off and it's funny. I have a whole box <laughs> over there. We, seriously, so much of that stuff yeah. online. People buy it and it's like for schools yeah. and stuff. Nice. Cajun. Ca 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 Cajun Kayon. Kayon. Yeah. Good stuff. So you're getting some traction now, I hear. Yeah, it's been a bit quiet the last two days, but that's the way it, that's the way it goes. Yeah. Up and down. Online's good. So you moved in, what? It's not even a month ago now, is it? Uh, it's about five weeks. Five weeks. Yeah. Is that working? Yes, it's working. Jesus, the camera's... Did you see what I did today? No. Uh, <laughs> I uh, was doing a test mm. on the stream, and I was testing my camera settings. Mm. So I was at home. Luckily, I had my pants on. <laughs> <laughs> and um, I had the, the camera set, and I was testing it, checking focus, mm. and I realized that Instead of using the test stream that I'd already started, I accidentally clicked this stream. <laughs> which is why it's got a new address. Right on. So someone watched me for two minutes going like this, changes, <laughs> changes the settings. <laughs> and then I got all these emails saying, oh, what happened to the stream? It said live. And it's, yeah, no, it's still, it's still 3.30, mate. It's still yep. happening at 3.30. But yeah, uh, it happens. Good and see there oh, we go. There, there's, there's the answer. He's, yeah. he's explaining what the magnet is. He knows everything. Yeah. He's, a, he's a buddy. He's like Gandalf of two vans. <laughs> <laughs> I'm yeah. just, I'm just a guy who just reads up a lot of stuff and goes, "Oh yeah, cool. That that makes sense." I'm the guy that googles it when one comes to my bench. <laughs> Why do I call my friend Six? Because that's his name, mate. It's right there. Ta da! He he he, uh, <laughs> he named himself. Did you? Yeah. 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 So I really. did. I did it for one reason, one reason only. So I can walk up to people at the bar and go, "Hi, I'm six. Do you want to be nine for the night?" Ah, yeah. see what you did there. <laughs> or, or the other one, "Hi, I'm six, and you're definitely ten. Oh, Ooh. or maybe a nice. You can't give him too much. <laughs> <laughs> don't, don't get, don't get big headed. <laughs> so, how, have you seen any chaos on the streets? Because as you hear, see here, this is Enmore Road, the main one of the main roads in the entertainment district of Sydney. And uh, have you seen any you know, naked people running past or anything yet? No, 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 no. We left Campbelltown. Remember? <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> no, in in the most legitimate sense, there was this. Um, there was a woman about three or four months before the lockdown situation, where I was wondering what the hell's going on. I walk outside the shop and everyone's like going, "Oh my god!" And there's this woman walking down the street, bare ass naked, <laughs> going, Woo. like walking along like this. Party time. Um, <laughs> That's Campbelltown. Yes. Through and through. <laughs> well, it's just hit four o'clock, buddy. Time to close up. Yeah, all right. Let's do it. Oh, okie dokie. So most of the Americans are asleep, and they're most of my audience, but we've still got 30 people. That's cool. So the, we're not getting many questions, though. So think, of, right. think of what you want to ask us, if anything, Legends. And um, we're going to head over to the, over to the pub. Uh, might, might even set up my nicer camera, if you're lucky. Bear in mind as well, it takes, it takes time for people to notice the, um, the notification that we've started. Yeah, there's a bit of that. The we've been going for shy. 24 minutes now. So, he's got a uh, nice roller shutter there. I saw someone threw tomato sauce at it the other day. Yeah, no, no, <laughs> tomato paste. Tomato paste? Tomato paste. Oh, wow. It was a bitch to clean. <laughs> Uh, it's still on. It's still on the buddy roll show. Oh, whatever, I can't be bothered. At least um, when, uh, well, you know, at my shop, it's like an industrial area. Mm. So when it's shut down, it's proper shut down. No one's really around. Here you've got all sorts of scumbags walking past. <laughs> and oh, good. That, the back alley and good is people. Ninety nine percent graffiti. Yeah. Eh. It's got a vibe. It's got a vibe. It's all about the vibe. People don't even bother graffitiing my joint. 
this is like the, this is like the stack of um, things yet to be processed. All ah, right, we can film everything in here. Yeah, there's nothing. nothing you hard. don't have your gimp suit out or anything. Yeah. No. Just gonna move those out of the way so addresses. But... Oh yeah. Ooh, yeah. these are going for a pretty penny now for some inexplicable reason. Everyone wants, everyone wants them. <laughs> hey, got, too, like, hey. two more thing, and then I got that thing there, which is a weird like handmade DJ mixer. Yeah, company called Rodec in Belgium. Rodec, wow. Yeah, our European and mates. This, and then might of course know the, about um, that. yeah, yep. I saw these uh, cassette decks. They're going for no, like... no. These are different ones. Oh, okay. They, yeah. they're not. Oh, <laughs> you got that. Yeah, I got a dat there. I got another dat behind me there. That's a rack mount, you know, heart pro CD player. This one's got the tape deck and the CD, so yeah. you can dub to and from both. Oh, of them. Fuck yeah! <laughs> Go old school. <laughs> and this is mine. Yep. I always wanted uh, one of these, and now I've come to pick it up. That's my ulterior motive for coming out here. So it's all about. Ever since I saw Wayne's World. And he had a similar guitar with a Rosewood fretboard and an off-white body. I had to have one. Sure. Whoa. Yeah. This, gotta... this, is, this is stuff I've got to get through the process still, but like... you got a bit of work to do, son. Yeah, that's why I just hired someone and hopefully oh, fifth, yeah? person <laughs> fifth person lucky. Fifth person lucky. You've had a bad run, haven't you? Yeah. We've still got 5G out here. Yeah. yeah. Magic. What's this one? That's an old Ace Tone. Ace Tone. Solid State 1. Yeah, right. And then there's um, a bunch of other solid state ones there. There's yeah. a JC120 there. Oh, yeah. Is that the one you need the pop for, or is it another yeah, one? The GC55. Is oh, the, the 55, yeah. That's right. I got, um, them. I got them too. I didn't forget. Yep, yeah, cool, cool. Little the. Uh, uh, that's the Sun concert ah, base. Nice. So that's just coming in for a recap. Train's yeah. still alright. Transform. Uh, transistor's still alright. Don't know. Don't know. <laughs> I'll find out. <laughs> also, ah. some really. Yep. Woo. Stack of those. Built a wall out of them. The interesting thing is Fender Japan had the, had their own thing going on, so they actually had a bunch of Japanese-only market amplifiers as well. Yeah. Those are little Spare micro valve. Fender heads. Yeah, right. What's that running? Is that just got a preamp in the a valve preamp? No, I think Rock Pro Circuit. Oh, okay. <laughs> valve is <laughs> diode. Yeah. <laughs> so two his. of those, but the cabs. Yeah. That's a six by five. Oh, what? <laughs> and there's and I've got two four by eight cabs as well. <laughs> That's insane. Yeah. So cool. you take one of those heads, put it on yeah, top of that. You can see through the grill. Yeah. <laughs> that's a uh, that's a six by five cab. That's wicked. What's and this back here? That's a four by eight, and there's a four second eight. four by eight down there as well. That's like the uh, the micro. What are they calling the? I think Roland had Roland some. Roland cubes. Yep. Yeah, the micro Same stacks deal. or whatever they call them. Yep. A lot of bass amps using them now. Randall stereo chorus. Yeah. Man, some weird stuff. Yep, and then I've got like uh, all the various random like old school mixes too, which is yep. kind of cool. Some old synths and whatnot. Um, what else? Oh, the world's largest ever, <laughs> the largest ever seven segment display on a floor. Oh, wow. <laughs> Look at that thing. Yeah. <laughs> Fuck yeah. You'll be completely yeah. drunk and you'll still be able to see that. This thing is absolutely <laughs> that's, insane. That's like one of the signs on the highway I just yeah. passed. <laughs> You're not going to miss this. I've got, on, a, I've got a bloke who might be interested in that, actually. That's just a MIDI controller, is it? Yeah. Yeah, I've got a bloke. It's like old school 90s German made MIDI controller. I've got a rocker that would be interested in that. <laughs> nice, nice. <laughs> can, I, can I come back and grab that later on? Yeah, yeah, that's yeah sweet. Good. What else was there? There's something, something else that was weird that was kind of cool as well. I have a CD player there. Synth? Yep, that's a um, sound canvas. Oh, yes. Four. The gamers are buying them up. Oh, yeah, I got like four of them. Yeah, the gamers are buying them up. I got like the Roland sound canvas, like the proper ones yeah. as well. The gamers love them because they're, uh, they're yep. like retro. Oh, yeah. Uh, we've got head first amplification here. How you going, Jace? Hey. Best part is the, the, the lighting. I hate those lights. I love them. Look at them. You could, you could catch crabs with them too. <laughs> or you could catch crabs other ways here, but I won't go into that. Uh, <laughs> uh, who else do we have? Someone else said something. Oh, Fretronics Engineering. How you going, Ollie? You crazy Scottish bastard. Oh, what's that? That's a Yamaha powered mixer. I can tell how light it is by the way you're struggling yeah. with it. It has. <laughs> A drum machine. It's got a drum machine. It's in got it. a drum machine. Oh. And a tuner. Yeah? Yeah. What? What do they do the meters? Nah. Oh, it's just <laughs> got to rotate a... the knob until you get your reference frequency. 
A440, and then all the way up and all the way down. (laughs) So everyone in the band can get their their reference. That's one way to empty a room really quickly. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, So is this a repair job? No, it's a newie. Okay. Yeah, Yeah, nice. The Yamaha dealer thing in that works out quite well. Yamaha keyboards are great. I love them. As anyone who ever asks me, like, oh, I want this, I want that product, whatever, it's like... The Yamahas, man. Yamaha are the Toyota of musical instruments. Yeah, they just make parts till chaos come home. Legitimately, I've got like three pianos in the workshop at the moment that mm. all need contact PCBs. Yeah. The same ones used on modern pianos too. Yeah. It's the same one across all of them. I've got someone asking here about the specs of the Strat. Can we throw it on a bench and have a quick look? Yeah. I don't even know. I do. I don't even know, Angelo. <laughs> I just know that it looks nice. And, uh... It, it can play better than I can, so. So this one is a Japanese market ST standard, Look also known as an ST48. It's beauty, isn't it? It's basically never been used. That's mint, man. These were the Japanese equivalents of the US standard strats, yep. so nine and a half inch radius. Um, That's what we like. Headstock adjust, truss rod. Seven and a quarters for vintage fanboys. Yeah, exactly. There is not a mark on it, eh? No, like in the most legitimate sense. When I say this uh, thing is like basically brand new, it's like never oh. been used. Oh. And that is the serial number if you want to make it fake. Oh. <laughs> yeah. So serial number R and made in Japan would yeah. put it in the 90s. Shit, yeah. It's right about when I started playing guitar. Yep, so this one has been very, very well looked after. It's got a slight bevel to the pole pieces, which I like too. I hate it when they dig in your pick. Yeah. That's nice. Yeah, this this is this is this is just like the entry level model for the Japanese market, or at least it was back then. Mm. But the Japanese market is very different to the Western market in how they do things because it is so large and because the expectation to the quality of goods is a lot higher. Yeah. So people will spend, <clears throat> you know, decent money on something and then want something to be good in return but they also want that from a lot of the you know m- more sort of budget conscious items these weren't cheap when they came out but they were not expensive in the same way that they're sold for over here yeah not these days everything bloody expensive <laughs> <coughs> nice looking forward to playing some mossy riffs on that because that's what strats are for and some be- uh, and some uh, shadows got to practice my shadows and that, that's sacrilege to do it on a different coloured guitar than than uh, Hank Marvin, but anyway. <laughs> <laughs> I actually had one of the, um, because there was a rack mount delay that uh, was out years ago that was all analogue model, but it was designed to sound like the Vincent Ecker rack oh, yeah, that he yeah. used. <clears throat> it was like, was it a- AGE something or other? Mm. And all the Shadows fans went wild over it. Oh, yeah, I remember that. Off. Yeah. What, what were they going for? Like five grand or something stupid? Uh, we, we sold, I sold like 800. Oh, okay. that, that was how much I oh, I'm thinking. Of, still... I'm thinking of the one in, that comes in the suitcase. Yeah, that one. Oh, you know that, they're, those actual tape decks. Yeah, they're in, yeah. they're insane. Money. <laughs> they're ridiculous. Yeah. But so, what's it feel like to uh, have a proper retail store? Let me stand behind the counter. <laughs> all right. See, this is what I should have done. But I made a desk because mm. I was doing drafting at the time. Yeah. So it made sense to still have a desk. But mm. now it's just kind of wasted. But space. then the flip side of that is, <clears throat> when I've got to punch in products online. Standing all day. Uh-huh. Yeah, the, uh huh. Need a stool or something. Nah, I need, I need to actually set up a proper little area where I can have like a little actual desk type thing because there is a lot of that stuff that comes along. A lot of things that go into the system, out of the system, especially the second hand stuff. Yeah. I uh, I got shelved to rearrange the string wall yep. the other day, and now I'm talking about getting rotor sound in so I can get it done again. <laughs> Honestly, that is the one thing a lot of people don't realise about retail is retail is a never-ending cycle oh, man, of painting hey. the Harbour Bridge. It is brutal. You, you get to something the out of the way, you sell it out, and then you've got to rearrange yeah. everything and redo it. And... The worst part at the moment, we'll talk about this later, but mm. the, the price increases are hitting. So, oh. say you buy a guitar for 800 bucks, you sell it for 1200 maybe. Mm. You go to buy the replacement one. Now the cost price is 1250 You just lost 50 bucks by selling a guitar, and the more you sold, the more money you lost. So that's that's kneecapped everyone, I think, except for the big boys, because they, they say what price they want. Well, a lot of that is changing now that it's all being <laughs> conglomerated yet again. Yeah. Oh, God. I got a bit of sh- a bit of heat off Lyle this morning on his live stream. He said he never told me to do retail. I go, no, granted, you didn't. Nope, I you, did. You fucking did. <laughs> you did. I did. 
I told oh. I didn't tell you to do retail. I told you to get a shop front. Yeah, true. <laughs> I think I mis- misinterpreted retail, that. Is... Retail is a mugs game unless you put in so much crazy work and yeah. know your niche. I it mean, is, it is brutal. Sitting there repairing an amp, you feel like you've mm. achieved something. When you're sitting there entering data, it just feels like you got nothing done, eh? Yeah. And all the jobs that you do have to get done are still waiting, mm-hmm. and you're just there. And it's a. The annoying part is, is it's the stress and the worry and the gamble about going. Oh, hey, now I've got to hope people buy stuff because I bought this stock. <laughs> I've got to try and leverage off of like the um, the dropship from various suppliers, and I've still got to do all of this and hope that people are going to sort of come in. That's what killed us in Campbelltown and why we yeah. almost went out of business. Because when you're in an area where no one will go to it anymore. You just bug it. That's it. And it's online only. And if there's no online sales, you're you're stuffed. And online, (laughs) everyone goes, oh, yeah, online, you don't have overhead, you don't have to worry about things. You do, though. Do you know how much I was spending on online marketing just to break even? Look at these cards, lads. It's like 3D. Yeah. That shit's cool. It's UV spot print. UV spot print. Mm. It's not very good because I just went with the cheap stuff because I this is like the fifth buddy set of cards I had to go through <laughs> oh, yeah. over the years. Keep changing addresses. You've got to keep... I, keep... I, I got the good cards the very first time because I did graphics design in the past, but yeah. um, I had to change it and change it again and change it and change it. And I'm like, ah, forget it. <laughs> so, progressive music. Yeah. That's your tutoring wing. Correct. Where's that band run now? Is that still Campbelltown? Still Campbelltown in the old shop location. Yep. But I'm going to open up a branch in this area around third term. What music shop doesn't have tuition? Me. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what I'm doing, so. <laughs> uh, oh, hello. Yeah, this, one, two, five, man. This will look very familiar to Michelle. She learned two songs on it, and then uh, that was it. During lockdown, I bought her one. And that was, I think it was, uh, I forget, I, I think one of them was an Ed Sheeran song, so I wasn't too too upset about her stopping to play <laughs> <laughs> I learned uh, most of Bohemian Rhapsody, and mm. now if I sat down and played it, I could barely remember a chord, eh? It's, you don't have muscle memory when you when you get older, eh? It's, yeah. oh, you got shitboxes doing rev, <laughs> rev burnouts here as well. Uh, when you're younger, you seem to just retain that, that info, and as mm. you get older, it takes work. Kind of sucks, probably because when you're a kid, all you got to worry about is picking your nose and um, whether or not you get macas on the way home. So yep. you don't have that much to stress about. <laughs> See, I, I really need to learn to play piano properly because I fix so many of them. Yeah, it's like uh, I, I know what makes a good action. And yeah, I know how to do it. It's we just, know the feel. I know how to play properly. And just tuning in the action and stuff gets yep. you gets you pretty well there. But then you finish it and you kind of want to show it off and you sort of can't. <laughs> Well, at least I can't anyway. <laughs> nice one. A few Grecos. Love a, yeah. good, love a good Greco. There's another another couple of pallets of stock arriving shortly. So, so where, do they deliver it out the back or yeah, just out the front? Out the front yeah. Oof, brutal. Basically, basically the um, pallets go out the front because they're big, massive boxes that are about yay tall. Yeah. Actually, about yay tall. Um, they come out the front there and then we basically just empty it. Straight into the back there. Straight out of the back and then categorise it. The car and start taking it away to the service department. Yep. Head first, that's Jay says, Cool Store 6. Congrats on setting it up, mate. Thank I can you. only imagine how much work you put into it. Yep. I haven't had a day off since mid-December. <laughs> really. Shit, I've I can tell. I've gone through five staff. You've got the thousand yard stare. Uh, <laughs> which is different mm. to my usual 500 yard stare. It's a little off. <laughs> <laughs> Although I do have some really, really, really nice um, uh, Japanese classicals coming soon. Oh, nice. Mm. Everyone loves a good Japanese classical. Well, like, the, th- the crazy thing is, and you go to Japan, and a lot of Japanese makers and that still have stocks of Brazilian rosewood. Yeah, right. Like, they've got so much of it. Because you can't harvest that shit anymore. Nope. <laughs> So they've got all these old stacks they still use on guitars. Like, this one's from the 90s. Oh, I saw the listing for that. Why am I tilting my head? The phone's not tilting. <laughs> <laughs> Does that turn? I've got to remember how to use it. Yeah, there we go. So yeah. that's a Morris. Yeah. Right. Yeah, nice. Nice. Beautiful frets. I thought you were going to play... I was only 19. <laughs> Don't actually know it. <laughs> well, you just played half of it. Really? Yeah. Imagine that. Yeah. 
Oh, you got no defender there. Oh, that's the other Jap. That's the Jap um, brother yep. of my one. Yep, same yeah. model. And that looks just Hands as minty those. as that one. Yeah, it's got a bit of a chip out of the finish. Oh, man, it's pretty good though, eh? Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's the, that's the only Book. chip. Little dent on the back there. Exactly. But that thing's a, that thing's a beast as well. I just yeah. I can't bring myself to buy a sunburst anything. <laughs> yeah, the ones that you just go hot damn about for that kind of thing. Hot damn. Hot damn. Look how weird. <laughs> 62 reissue. Oh yeah. Once again, 20 odd years old. That is insane. It. It's these guys that just buy them and just stick them in their closet, eh? Yeah. It's getting and then rarer. Others which they do that in the closet, unfortunately, because there's so yeah. much um, humidity in Japan, yeah. they corrode right through. Yeah. Nice yeah. one. So that one's nice. And then the, even, once again, I'm not a Les Paul guy, but the. Yeah, I'm not a Les Paul guy either. I, I had a studio. I did a setup on a studio the other day, and that was probably as close as I could come to buying a Les Paul. I'd just get a studio. <clears throat> Oh, that's a nice figurine. That looks like the uh, the blue moon yeah. face that I've got. Indigo. Yeah. So it's a maple top, but it's a um, a quilted veneer on there. Yeah, the, the models above this have the full full quilted through. Oh, if you've got something <coughs> quilted like mm. that and it's the full half inch, you're talking big bickies. Yeah. Well, the, well, this one we're doing twenty one ninety nine. So it's um, like it's like a Gibson minus all the annoying shit. I know. Right? <laughs> However, it does still have one piece. Now. Ah. Yeah. I like the volutes. I, people don't like them. I love them. Yeah. Well, the words are good. Yeah. Fun. I had a guitar once. Um, we were comparing guitars. It's like it's like comparing something else when you're with your mates. But uh, I showed him the neck on this, I think it was a Jackson I had, and it had a volute, and I stood on the neck, <coughs> stood, put all my weight right where the nut yeah. is, and it didn't break. And my mate kept breaking his, his uh, Les Paul. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, here we go. This guitar... <clears throat> What's this? This is Moa's guitar. Yeah? Oh, yeah. hang on, I remember you, this, the, uh -huh. the high-tech the yeah. high-tech thingy. Legit, this thing is a monster of an instrument. So well made for its price point, but it's also got the, um, basically the guts of a GE200 inside of it. Right, so effects can, processor? Yeah, yeah. full on. <laughs> Good job. So this has a full modeling rig in it, all the effects, what? all that kind of stuff. You can run it either straight out into a PA, you can run it straight out into an amp, you can plug headphones in, or USB connection as an interface. A, um, interface. Yeah. And on top of that, you've also got the ability to turn on and off their um, guitar modeling. Um, so the pickups basically go through filtration to make them sound like either like an acoustic, acoustic and or stuff. a Strat or yeah. a Tele or a 335 or Jesus. a um, even a, they got a Petrucci model in there too. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh. So you can assign those and turn that on and off. Pair it up with the wireless foot switch, which is like the size of two Mars bars. <laughs> you can recall your presets. It's got an inbuilt looper, looper, inbuilt drum machine. <laughs> what? All of that kind of stuff. So how do you control it all? You can't just do it from the one knob. Oh, it's an app. Uh, oh yeah. Uh, what is it like Bluetooth or it's got a plug in? Yeah, Bluetooth. Friggin' hell. There is. Uh, there is. So you're gonna get heaps of customers complaining about noise because their phones right next to the guitar. <laughs> uh, that, oh yeah. wow. Yeah. Yeah, cool. <coughs> Searching. Yep, yeah, found Dink. him. It's there even the same colour. Go. Go on. Loading. I still have to update this one. Loading. But the main thing is is that they're just so well made. You know, and it's right. not connecting? <laughs> no, one, one time. There we go. There we go. Loading there we it. Go. No, like, no good, mate. Wrong colour. F... They do them in a lot of colours, actually. <laughs> yeah. Including, like, pink, white, blue. They do a version above this as well with Wilkinson hardware. It's a yeah. Wilkinson trim. Yeah, right. And that's got roasted maple, too, eh? Uh-huh. Nice one. There we go. Yeah, like, for example, you can go into that and you've got all of your different overdrives, boosts, Pedals, fuzzes, all of that. Yeah. Amps galore, like there is low gain and high gain, and then you can also load up um, impulse uh, not uh, profiles, so you can use a profiler to make profiles. Yeah, because I got the GE three hundred as my main thing. Cabs, same deal. Impulse responses, load up your own or use the factory ones. Bloody hell! All the modulation effects, but say for example, if I want the modulation in front of the amp, shit, and do that, and then if I want to save presets, they're all there. So what's this go for? Like 1400 bucks. 1400 yeah. Sorry, can I just interrupt this to watch this person try and park? <laughs> <laughs> this is, oh, no, they got the miles. This is here. funny. He's like a meter out from the gutter. What are you doing, champ? What are you doing, champ? 
Here we go. Oh, I think he saw me. And that's, <laughs> that's the GTRS thing that you can turn on and off. So when I switch the switch on the guitar... It knows. It changes Wow. All. I can change all that stuff, and then I can go into the foot switch and change what it does, whether it's pulling out patches or the um, looper. Yeah. And then there's, like, all the other things, the drum tuna. machine, the Bloody tuner, hell. all of that. Like, for how well they made them, for the prices they are... Can it record as well? <laughs> no. Ah, see, so of course, I always it. choose the thing that it doesn't have because <coughs> I'm a cockhead. <laughs> but you take that, you pair it up with a TT Electronic Wiretap recorder. Oh, yeah. yeah. There, there you go. There you go. Yeah. All right, let's get the hell out of here. All right. I'm, uh, I don't know. Just straight across the road if you want. The Duke's, Duke's a good location. The Dukey. The Duke. Because right. they, they've always, always got gigs as well. They're always like on high, a lot of, uh, lot of metal gigs. I can just, hear them from inside the shop. I'll just grab me, uh, grab me bag. It's got all the pro camera gear in it, but I think we might just stick with this. We'll see how the audio is in the pub. Oh, I'm in, I'm in the cage. Do so you need to go back in? Nah, just slide it. Just going to pull it, just going to pull it down. So it's going to keep going. Sweet as, bro. All right. Any, meeny, miny, which key? I have way too many keys. It's an old air dryer, isn't it? <laughs> Alright, uh, do you want to go to the two core? What's the other one further up? Huh? What's the other pub further up? I forget. I'm trying to get my bearings here. Go the end more down there. This is the one? No, that's the one I'm thinking of. Yeah. yeah. The, Duke, the, Duke, the Duke is the good one. That's the metal one. Hopefully they don't get the shit to me having a phone. <coughs> nah, they're cool. I know. This is the death trap. <coughs> Us filming ourselves jaywalking. Jaywalking's only a thing over in the Sep states. <laughs> We're not gonna make it. Jesus, see the back of the tire on that thing. Ah, oh, it's our moment to shine. Until this Ute tries to kill us. No, he's going the other way. <laughs> over in the pickleback. Is that like nickelback? We're going to grab a seat right here. Oh, yeah? What do you want to go in here? Yeah, well, there's music. Let's give him a bit of a tour. Uh, well, it's going, eh? How are you going? Oh, crap. Finishing up the day, me and the other dude who owns another music shop. Yeah, I'm, I'm stupid, too. <laughs> oh, you're across the road. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's yeah. Neat. What about that here? I want drum lessons. Oh, yeah? That's the one thing he doesn't do. <laughs> what do you need? We'll go over and get them. We'll come back. <laughs> we'll trade you for beers. <laughs> Might grab a. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 How, how many beers is yeah. that? Yeah. That's a thousand. That's right. That'll, that'll get me through a good weekend. <laughs> Can I just grab a bolt of hazy IPA, then? Yeah. You yeah, having the same though? It's a good one. Yeah, yeah, I'll give that a go as well. So grab, I'll grab two. Just grab them. How's it going? It's all right. It's all right. Same, same. Copy right. How's the... Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, you'll grab this. I'll grab the next one. I'll go see the outside then. Chosen the world's most unstable table. <laughs> well, we can name it after my ex then. <laughs> you can always uh, go back and tap into your Wi Fi if we need to. Well, it reaches out to here. 
I don't think uh, the route is the is just at the um, front of the shop. Yeah. Yeah. The audio is going to work here. Yeah, I was going to get the camera out, but I'm worried it's going to topple over on this stupid table. Mm. Yeah. We'll see. We'll see. So, can anyone hear us? Does it sound like shit? Oh, it seems it's going to sound like shit with those omni omni mics. Yeah. We're working on. It. <laughs> I think we need the 9mm. Mate, we're not American. We <laughs> <laughs> need the 9mm. Pop a cap in your ass. <laughs> uh, so, I've got my Glebe camera. The one that uh, focuses as about as well as I do. I figure it's going to be able to focus on a tall wall. Surely. <laughs> uh, shit. So, I've got this little chew The road? Yep. <laughs> See how that goes. Now you've got to either we've got to tip the table this way and keep it this way. <laughs> I'm sure there's a way that I can just shove some shit underneath. Maybe get a text on the side and then the black Bit of noise but all good. <laughs> this is me being a nerd. Nerd now! Nerdlinger. Nerds! Oh, that's broken, girl. Yeah. Oh, does it? We move the table just slightly this way. It's up on a um, little bit of stubby there, so just grab your bit. This is a recipe for disaster. Nah, the whole thing's bent. I'm gonna put my beer on the on the seat. We didn't think this through, did we? <laughs> I think many things through. Maybe not this specifically, but sometimes. Uh, what I was going to do is mm. walk around with it in my backpack. Yeah. yeah. That's how the um, all the IRL streamers do it. It's the only way you can do it, eh? I can't get video into Android having it what I do. Can I tell you one of those um, external adapters? Yeah, well that's, that's, I've tried them. I'm trying another one. Problem is you need a <coughs> power injector. Really? They, they draw too much power. Yeah, I think it's hot, man. Because they've usually got their own battery in Ah, uh, this one does. That one does. No, no, I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about the, um, where is it? The, um... So there was uh, the Axe, remember the Axoon I was looking yeah, at? The Axoon, yeah, yeah those they, ones. they discontinued it. Yeah, there's other places. Yeah, well, that's why I tried that one I was talking about the other day, the, yeah. um, uh, I forget the name, Aten, A-T-E-N. Yeah. Aten, I don't know how you say. Do you know your Wi-Fi password? Yeah, that's good. Like, punch in that bad boy? Yeah. I'm not calling you bad boy. Yeah, baby, you don't deserve that yet. Champions, I'm gonna have to drop that stream for a bit. Then we're gonna have to pick this one up. But bear with us. <laughs> See, a lot of shops around here are kind of like that because a lot of the buildings around here are from the late 19th, early 20th century. And so they did have a lot of tiles on the outsides of the walls because it was there, that was the style at the time. Yeah, like wearing onions on your belt. <laughs> <laughs> Little Simpsons reference there. Alright, what's the new passcode? 69, dude! Oh, fuck. Hang on. <laughs> Wait a minute! I was like, how's that tiny little tripod gonna handle the camera? And then I saw the camera, it's like, oh, that's why. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah micro four thirds all the way, brother. <laughs> Nah, man, I need glass, I need to compensate, I need big... Someone said that beer looks toxic. <laughs> For some reason, the, the uh, comments are coming up twice, I don't know why. Nah. Mm. Hey, we've got signal. Nice. We're tilted. We're overexposed. Where's, where's, where's your, where's your, um... Ah, don't worry about that shit. Do we line it up to the table or the tiles? I think we line it up, line up to the tiles. To the tiles. Are we level? 
<laughs> yeah, as levels we're getting. All right, let's. Uh, I'll be back in the tick legends. Disconnected. Re <laughs> I think we're back. <laughs> Connection's going red. All right. Oh, hot spot. Oh, yeah. Look, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> What dude? There we go. A little more natural now and we're connected again. Still a bit. Buffering. How are we now champions? Should be able to see us now. This is this is how fun uh, this is how fun it is to live stream. So, I watched live stream this morning. Did you catch it? I caught it after the fact. Yeah. I caught some of it anyway. So you deleted it. <laughs> <laughs> nothing, nothing controversial. Just OBS was giving him yeah. a hell of a time. So he just pulled the pulled the pin. You can see. <coughs> so he, he was talking, and um, I think OBS was glitching because he's running it on a virtual machine on a Mac. Yeah, and it doesn't like accessing the hardware through the virtual machine. I which, think which is odd because OBS now supports M1 silicon, so yeah. you can just run it natively. That's what I do. Maybe he hasn't got the latest version. I don't know. Yeah, well, we'll, we'll talk to him about that because maybe we can fix that. But uh, it was working beautifully, and then about half an hour in, it stopped, and then started glitching. Yeah. And you could see he was still telling stories for like 20 minutes. Yeah. <laughs> and there's nothing more. Uh, uh, it's disheartening than realising you've been talking to <laughs> nobody for a good 20 minutes. <laughs> so he, he, he eventually, because he, he answers every mm. comment. Yep. Oh, that's a pretty cool bike. He answers every comment, um, so he's naturally a fair bit behind. Yep. And by the time he got to the point where everyone's saying the stream dropped out, he was talking for about 20 minutes. So he started a new stream, yeah. but you can just tell his heart wasn't in it after that. And I know yeah. that feeling, I could see it in his eyes. I go, I've felt that a million times. So, yeah, I think he got the shits to delete it after that. But we'll, we'll talk to him about his settings, because um, I use a PC, so I'm no good to him, but you, you're a Mac man, so you know all about it. Well, that, that and I've, I've done systems like this for streamers, so... Yeah. You know, it's a, there's there's a bunch to get through to make sure that it works the way you want it to, and yada yada. When it's when it's set up, it's fine. Now you mentioned once, I don't know if I should say this, but <laughs> you mentioned once that you were setting up video streaming setups for essentially porn stars. Yes, <laughs> correct. For uh, only fans. Only fans people. Yep. So they they come to you and say. It looks like a back alley horrible uh, Russian video. Make it look like Hollywood. So you set them up with a rig and teach them how to use it. Yeah, it was partly that, and also I partly helped them with the marketing side of things and that as well. So it is. It's become since COVID, it became a big marketing thing, didn't it? Only yeah. fans. It was huge. Well, it was big before then, but it was very niche. But then it became more acceptable as time went by, which is a good thing. I mean. You know, more more power more power to those who want to do it and whatnot. Mm. And if I can make a couple of bucks on getting people the highest quality smut that they can, <laughs> then so. why not? There's nothing worse than uh, <coughs> when your smut's glitching. <laughs> <laughs> so, that's yeah. good. Fuzzy smut, not yeah. good. Well, depends what you're into, you know. <laughs> Some people might like the low price smut. Oh, no, sir. when I used to work at the, um, the adult store, Years ago, there was a guy who came in by yeah, the name. We're getting ahead of ourselves here, but yeah, it's an adult yep. store. Keep, keep that in mind for a yep. minute. And there was a guy that, um, yeah, he every time he came in, he wanted to watch the movies and whatnot, and have a whack. He was obsessed with the Hirsute women. Oh, yeah. yep. I think I know the guy. Is his name Christian Menzies? No, no. <laughs> his name was Arthur. 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 Did he say it like that too? Did he? Arthur. Arthur. And every time the conversation was always the same. It was um, interesting to say the least. <laughs> Old Arthur. Oh, I hope he's doing well wherever he is. His suit tastes. Good on him. So, you worked in a sex shop. How long for? About 18 months. 18 months. Mm. 
did you just find the job in a paper or what? Gumtree. 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 Yeah. However, it wasn't just a sex shop. Oh, okay. Yeah, no. I don't know how far we want to go into that. Yeah, right <laughs> There, I, I know the stories. But there, yeah. there, 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 was, there were some things there that... Things are happening. As, as an engineer, I was just amazed at what people could come up with. <laughs> it was phenomenal. So this is the uh, <laughs> this is the story I heard about how someone fashioned a dildo out of a pair of pants and a shopping bag, was it? Yep. No, no, no. It was even better than that. It's even better than that. Where is it? Um... Uh, yeah, that, let's let's move on. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. See, see, you you, you hit the button. So it's a uh, eeny meeny miny. Not that one. Not that one. I hope you don't have a photo of it. Where were we? Gooden, Gooden wants me to start uh, whistling the Jay Giles band song because apparently I always do it while I'm preparing. I go. <laughs> I can't help it. I don't know what it is. Oh well. <laughs> yeah. Legit, you could whack someone with that thing. Okay, you don't want to see that, Legends. Oh, solid. <laughs> oh, that is that is cheap quality. Just You're quality really, American engineering right there. Really pay for that squeal. Oh, that's the anti-theft mechanism. <laughs> the thief hears that pull up and they don't want it. Isn't that just a reason to get it fixed if someone does steal the bastard? Well, um, <laughs> Nis and Navarra's were blowing their diffs. And everyone's going, ah, oh, Nissan's their shit, they're not yeah. what they used to be. Turns out Jeep was the one building the diffs. Yeah. <laughs> they were getting them off the shelf. Oh my... It's like Mitsubishi now, they don't even make their own vans, they're yeah. French. Bloody Renaults. Everything's just a figurehead, and there's some company making everything for everyone somewhere. Yeah. Same old story. That's why you just buy a Toyota. Yeah. Stick with a Toyota. Yeah, that's what I got. I'm thinking about selling it, because I want to get fit. Yeah. But with the, the cold weather starting again, Riding a bike at six in the morning isn't that appealing, so... Yeah, yeah. Uh, we're, we're going to move out this way soon and whatnot, and then I'll um, get a bike and walk around and whatnot and stop myself being a fat bastard the way I am. So which way is the workshop? East or west? west. That way. The other west. <laughs> on King Street. So it's on King Street. It's about, what, three blocks away? Uh, more than that, like two, two three kilometres. Oh, okay, right. And walkable, but it's a hell of a walk. Yeah. So you, uh, your plan is to get someone in the shop while you're doing repairs up there, and if they need you, you can come up. Yeah, basically I'll be down at the workshop doing repairs most days of the week, and then I'll come here of an evening. Mm. I'll be here on like Sundays and Mondays as well. Yep. Yeah, just getting through all the stuff that's there, doing more of the repairs, more of the bits and bobs there, and oh, prepping wow. stuff for sale that comes in from overseas, because... I can only fit in so much in a 12 to 14 hour workday. I just realised I'm on top chat. <laughs> <laughs> After telling Didn't change anything. <laughs> oh, yeah, no one's here. After telling everyone to go to live chat instead of top chat, I forget yeah. to do it. Well done. Oops. Oops a doodle. So, how'd you get started in, in music in general? Good how'd question. You, how'd you start playing it? Well, right back. Being, being a kid and that, I was the biggest nerd out there. Like, bifocal glasses, oh, socks yeah. up to my asshole, shorts above the knee, the whole thing. I was like the super weird nerdy kid at school. Not the nerd that we are now. Nah. Different, nerd. different kind of nerd. Yeah. You know. Different level. Exactly. Nerd, even, nerd even, level. even less social skills. <laughs> So now, I was, was like an outlet nope. for you? No. Nope. I was completely tone deaf, had no interest in music whatsoever, didn't, nothing. But then I was over at a family member's place when we moved to New Zealand and there was a guitar there. Polynesians, there's always guitar around. See, cool. that's, uh, that's where I got it from, mm. the Polynesians. Yeah. Sorry, I'm going, getting mixed yep. up. Yeah. So I picked it up and started like teaching myself stuff and then I wanted to learn and then I went to high school and whatnot. Hung around all the Maldi and the Islander boys, and they all play guitar. They all play guitar, don't they? And I learned from them, and I kept getting interested. And I was like, you know what? I want to learn guitar to pick up chicks. <laughs> Classic thing. <laughs> Doesn't work. <laughs> I, I was more interested in the guitar than I was in the women. Yeah, that's it. That's what happened to me. Yeah. <laughs> that's my excuse, and I'm sticking to it. <laughs> yeah, no, I got into that, and then. Because, you know, being as you are, being as I was a trash bag 13 year old, getting stoned with my Maldi mates and that. And I was into a lot of rap and a lot of that kind of stuff because it was late 90s. Badass, yeah. Yep. And my mate, who was Maldi, Maldi for I was 
smoking weed with. And he's like, hey, hey, check this out, check this out. We're sitting there in the dark and he puts us on. Like, dude, this song is awesome. What the hell is it? Oh, it's Metallica. I'm like, what? I thought they were like all angry and screamy and shit. It was nothing else matters. Yeah. And then I started listening to the album, and that's how I got into metal. Yeah, it's quite, it was difficult for people our age because we got into the, the Metallica thing when they had already everyone had already turned their backs on them. And for us, like if a band started out like Metallica's supposedly first shit album, they'd be a world class band. Like, yeah. So you've got to keep it in perspective. But you, I, you got shit on by the metalheads, yeah. And then, but you still didn't fit in with the pop. Yeah. people and the, the, the punk. I don't care what anyone says, Load and Reload were good albums. I think they were too. They were brilliant. They were great hard rock metalish type down. albums. <laughs> thumbs down all you want. I spent enough time bloody gigging and playing in various bands and that. No, it's, it's like people who turn around and say, oh, Nickelback suck. Fuck off. Yeah. Nickelback are good. I, I can't get over his voice. There's something about it. I don't See, know what it is. I like it. And I love the production. I love the fact that he was the kind of guy who just kept pushing, self-funded the first mm. album, and then got the um, distribution deal through Roadrunner. Oh, they were definitely hard Because he knew, yeah, he knew yeah. what it was all about. Yeah. You know, it was just good. And Jesus Christ, those guitar tones yeah. on those albums. He's got good guitar oh. tones, I'll give him that. I wonder what he's using these days. Something Whatever else. the fuck he wants. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, he had that um, Les Paul signature model, the Blackwater. Mm. And some other stuff, but I'll always, I'll always think of him and all of those bands of that era. They're all PRS guys, custom 24s yeah. and single cuts, and like uh, Mark Chapon, Chamonti, yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> GT. Um, so, progressing from learning how to play, you're in a couple of bands, aren't you? Yeah, I played in <coughs> when I was younger and all the rest of that, and then I got into um, a band with a dude who. He was one of the original Manpower guys. Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah. Or for those from the US, the Thunder from Down Under. That's yeah. what they were known as there. Because, oh, right? Different yeah. branding. Different branding because oh, okay. um, Manpower, the employment agency, uh. had the license over there. So I played in a band with one of the original Manpower guys. Wow. And the whole thing with the band was, was like, it was in that era where you could still kind of get ahead. And yeah. it was, there was a lot of very hard rock on the radio. So you had bands like um, Three Days Grace, and Hinder and all those that were on the on the radio doing well. So we were doing that kind of thing, recording album, doing all that. He spent a lot of money on this on a recording studio and he had no idea how to use it. <laughs> so I had to learn how to use it. So that's how I got into recording engineering and the whole premise behind the band was it was all that kind of music, but the band was also like a spectacle. So it was a bunch of dudes that all looked like they were in manpower. Yeah, right. <laughs> So you were basically um, man of war. <laughs> yeah, just minus the pedophiles. Yeah. Oh, okay, I didn't know that. <laughs> yeah, there was one, that, one of them oh, a little Jesus. while ago. <laughs> oh, all this stuff's coming out now. Just, yeah. Uh, God. But um, yeah, no, we, we did that, and that's that's actually how I got into repairing as well, because we had stuff there, we needed it fixed. I started learning how to fix it, and because I grew too up, cheap. Yeah. Yep. well, I was pov as well growing up so I had to fix everything I pulled everything apart I was obsessed with the instruments yeah. but then when we had the studio and people would come along and we, I did recording for them and that people would turn up with instruments that weren't ready for recording so I'm like nah nah if you're going to do that you come here first drop it off a few days before I get it fixed and then we get it ready nothing worse than a bass player with strings that sound like rubber bands and a guitarist going oh I've just got to hold my jack in the right way so it doesn't cut <laughs> yeah. out yeah we've all seen that the, the bass thing, I, a lot of basses seem to really enjoy their old strings. It's like, dude, you can get flat wounds to get you that sound, but not... Any bass player who turns around and says, Oh, I like the sound of flat strings, is full of shit. Uh, dead strings, yeah. Flat wounds Flat wounds are fine. Yeah. But flat wounds are also different because they don't get contaminated in the same way round wound yeah. strings do, which is why they keep that sound yeah, for that long. They stay, they stay and because the winding on them is either stainless steel or Monel, so there's no plating for it to dull, yeah. therefore there's nothing to impact that higher end frequency, which is kind of less on there, because they're round, wound around the um, either the round core or the hex core, depending on what it is. But yeah, dead, dead strings, they sound terrible. They sound horrid. Oh, he's people checking his shop out. Look at that. He's getting yeah. traction. He's getting traction. It's good, man. It's buy good. my stuff. You'll buy my stuff. You'll buy my things. Buy now. <laughs> uh, 
So yeah, I'm, I'm sure you've you've got a few guitars that have come in that you basically got to get a tetanus shot after. Oh my God, there is one. I get it all the time. Oh no, no, there is one that will that will outdo anything you could ever imagine. <laughs> there was a guy oh, who had a man. guitar, and it was owned by one of the dudes from the Oils. Oh yeah, right. It was played for years. And this guy. That's midnight all for you uh, Americans. Yep. And he brought it in, and he's like, "Oh yeah, I want this guitar set up and whatnot." And it was fuck. The frets are worn. Gone. There's divoting in the board. Everything. The lacquer's wearing away. The bridge, the saddle was broken and had a piece of paper over it holding the string up. <laughs> and I was like, "Okay, not a problem." He brought it in. I'm like, "This is the most disgusting guitar I've ever played." I tried to clean off the um, what was on the surface of it. Yeah. I couldn't actually get rid of it because. Oh, cool. That's the guitar. Yeah. Ah, oh, it's just gone straight through. That was well. That was where the finish was going and whatnot. Oh wow! <laughs> and then it's that. Show the camera <laughs> if you can. Yeah, that's nice, isn't it? Nice bit of uh, lacquer cheese there. So there was that, which was all over the guitar, including the uh, back of the instrument. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, focus. Like legit. It's a Panasonic, man. You got to ask it nicely. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that's that's how bad it was on the back. I could not get that off. I had to scrape that off with a pick, and I still yeah. couldn't get it. Yeah. That's so, when you're saying like refinish and the heel, yeah. everything. Ugh. It I was. I get that a lot from like landscapers. Yeah. They, they come home, they want to play their guitar. Board. They don't wash their hands. Nah. A little bit builds up each time. Yeah. So that guitar was the worst that I've ever come across. Some of the stuff that comes in from Japan is in it's it's mildew infected. Yeah. So I've got to pull out the um, polisher and I've actually got to pol repolish, cut and polish the finish because the mildew gets into the top layer of it. Yeah, it starts eating it, especially yeah. nitro. It's like a semi-organic material. So. Yeah. Thankfully, all the stuff that comes over is pretty much all exclusively um, poly. So. It's just on the surface, but yeah. gotta get I rid love of it. Poly. Um, Poly's got a real bad rap because all the Asian manufacturers put about a kilometer on there. Well, it was actually even before then. The reason why a lot of people hated Poly, which is funny because the original, a lot of the um, original Fender custom colors were actually Poly. Yeah. Some of them were nitro, but not all of them. Very few, man. Yeah. yeah. The custom they're... colors because they were um, they were just finish from the automotive industry. That's yeah. what they were, but. When Fender changed over ownership to CBS, and then they went over to the um, the heavy spray um, polyurethane finish. There's polyurethane and there's um... sorry, it was polyester. It was polyester, yeah. yeah. Yeah, they went to the polyester finish, and what they were doing to get the instruments out a lot faster is they were spraying it on thick and quick just to get them out, Let and that set. included the board. Just get it till it's flat. Put yep. color coat on top, and that's it. Exactly, and it was so thick. Yeah, it's like a gel coat. Yeah, and when it went on the fretboards as well, that's why the frets would wear out so quick. Yeah. When you combine that with other factors, a lot of people started thinking that it was um, affecting the tone of the instruments, but it was just shitty QC and shitty yeah. build quality. Yeah, it's sort of like how everyone hates ultralinear. Yep. It's not ultralinear's fault, it's the preamp design in ultralinear amps' fault. I tell you what, the Fender ultralinears, the supers and all the rest of that are brilliant amps when you use them the way they were meant to. They were designed not to be driven into overdrive. They were yeah. designed to be clean, clean for clean, use clean. with overdrive pedals. That's actually what the boost channel was for. Yeah. The, the boost channel on them was designed to be used in conjunction with an overdrive pedal to get that gain. Right. That's why they sound like shit by themselves. Yeah. But you put an overdrive pedal in front of them, bam. Don't, don't tell me that. I just pulled that out of a twin. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, but anyone who's pushing a twin to the point of clipping yeah, is insanity. Well, I got used for the Mud Honey show and they were happy with I saw, it. So yeah, I saw that. It was nice. I got a message. I was sort of shyly yeah. sending it to the promoter guy saying, yeah. So, is everything okay? And he's like, Yeah, no, it was perfect. <laughs> it fantastic. I'm like, Thank you. I've got in the workshop at the moment, being prepped for sale, is I've got a, um, a twin reverb 2, which was one of the last Rivera designs before he left. Yep. The last of the, um, the Islet board construction yeah, things. Right. Not bad amps. Yeah. Basically, they got like a Fender clean channel and then a Mesa Mark One ish kind of yeah. lead channel. What I find the lead channel in those Fenders, even the 75, there's just too much bottom end in it, but there's also you can't sort of share a signal path and be optimized for both. You've got to choose one or the other. Yeah. And that's something that Jace would know very well. He's a very much a Marshall, Marshall man, but yep. if he was to make a 
something that sounds beautiful, Fender clean, he could do that fine, but he, he understands that it's completely different values, completely yep. different architecture. And overdriven triad mm. anode follower stages yeah. don't tend to overdrive like a, a, a cathode follower does. And that's yep. part of the Marshall tone, the cathode yeah. follower. The, the, so. cold, the cold cathode clipper. Yeah, that too, yeah. yeah. So, Jace says we need another beer. Almost. I'm going a bit slow because I'm talking shit. Meanwhile, I'm talking non-stop and still bloody getting it down. <laughs> oh, well, I'm getting here, mate. I've got to drive home. <laughs> so do I. I've got to drive further than you. Oh, you did? Yeah? How, how long does it take from here? Well, i got the M5 of that. M5, so. yeah. 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 It's about it's about 60 kilometers. I didn't get lost on my ear. That's good. Every time I come to the city, the roads are different. But <laughs> I think they've sort of settled on the, the tunnel now. So yeah, nice. Everything works. But, yeah. <laughs> so... Going from playing music, mm. what got you into the tech? The, obviously the fixing stuff because you couldn't afford to. So that yep. extended from just instruments to amps. At what point did that take place? Well, no, that was um, because I couldn't work for almost two years, right? Whole bunch of things happened. You know, trigger warning for those who need them. Um, I attempted suicide for the umpteenth time because of a bunch of stuff that happened from where I was working. So for me, I was unable to work. My partners were looking after me, thankfully. Um, but I needed to make some money. So I started fixing some stuff on the side. I got given a pair of Fender, uh, got given a Fender Rhodes, learned how to fix them, started doing that as well. Found some people who were interested, making a couple of bucks out of it. And then um, I was buying busted stuff, fixing it and selling it. Word got around I was doing some guitar stuff. Cool stuff. People does. started turning turning up. Yep. <clears throat> and then I bought a Fender Baseman 50 amp head, silver face. And it wasn't working. I bought it cheap for like 400 bucks. I took it to Guitar Factory in Parramatta. <clears throat> and I didn't hear from them for like six weeks. I was like, what the hell? I called up. Hey, what's going on? Oh, yeah, still got to fix it. Okay. Finally, like another six weeks later I'm like what's going on oh yeah we finished about four weeks ago no one called you though <laughs> well, great thanks I turned up there and I'm like awesome and it was like 400 bucks for like two caps and a resistor yeah, right <laughs> I was like huh yeah so if they're charging that much surely I can learn that kind of thing I can do a shit job for that yeah, <laughs> yeah. so I went out and I um, uh, I jumped into TAFE and I started studying electronic engineering, um, an advanced diploma. When I did that as well, because the guitar repairs were starting to pick up a little bit, I was like, all right, I'll start, I'll, I'll make this a bit more official. So I went on what's called the NICE scheme, the New Enterprise Incentive Scheme. It's a um, government scheme in Australia that allows you to set up a business and the government will pay you for it. So they give you a, um, a fortnightly payment, like if you're on the, uh, like if you're on the dole or something like that and you get training on how to run a small business, how to do that, and you get payments for up to um, nine months. So I jumped on that, started doing it, and at the same time I was also doing TAFE, and I was working part-time too. So I was doing all those things. Business started picking up the moment I started taking in electronics work. Kept going, and I went from full-time TAFE down to part-time, still kept on the NIS nice scheme, and a shop called Somerset Music contacted me and said hey we heard you guys are doing repairs you're like near us we need someone to do some repairs for us cool so they dropped off a couple they uh i went and picked up a couple of repairs from them did them brought them back and they're like you're like five times faster than the last guy we had working with us when you're starting out you are though and that's what i'm finding when you start out you impress all, all the particularly the shops with fast turnarounds yeah. but as you get more busy everyone starts to get a bit disappointed yeah, so yeah. that happened. It got busy, and, they were, and then I said to them, you know, I'm going to go try and find a location. They said, well, we've got this big warehouse. You know, we got this room down the back. Did you want to lease that? Awesome. So I leased inside of there, had my customers, did their repairs and whatnot. I kept growing, and they were starting to have issues. Fast forward about nine, ten months or so, and we'd actually split the warehouse in two, so I was taking half of it and they were taking yeah, half. I think that's about when we got <laughs> Yeah. Because yeah. you actually contacted me and said, hey, uh, if you need someone to do finish work for you, I need to outsource some work. Shit. Did, yeah. Is that how we met? That's how you, that's how you <laughs> hit me up. And I was like, nah, man, I do that kind of thing. But you know what? Really? Yeah. <laughs> then we kind of started chatting. And that's what I just dropped off to you. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> 
Yeah. But yeah, no, so I, I started. I, I honestly, I don't remember. Yeah. Because yeah. yeah. you were hitting up I people like myself. <laughs> yeah. So Somerset Music um, yeah. went out of business. Yeah. Yeah. They went into administration because the guy who was running it, unfortunately, thought he knew everything, but didn't. It's funny that with business owners, eh? Yeah. It's a bit like us. Kind <laughs> of. So he went out of business and I was like, all right, I'm going to open up a shop because I reckon I can do it better than they can. I was still doing repairs. I was doing them for buddy, um, our mates fucking dream music oh, before, yeah. I, before I dropped them. Yeah. I dropped them after a couple of months. And yeah, so I opened up a shop with just a couple of items of used equipment from that warehouse. And the teachers who had the who were teaching for the um, Somerset Music spun off into their own company as well and screwed me over. Wow. So we had an agreement. I'd sell stuff and do repairs. They would do tuition, and we wouldn't cross each other's paths. We'd just sort of, you know, both do good yeah, things. I remember that. Yeah. yeah. And I came back from holiday, and they were they had stock on their side of the warehouse and were selling it to students. I'm like selling your stuff. <laughs> I'm like, what the hell, man? <laughs> You know, uh, we, we had an agreement here, and you want you want to you want to charge me like all this rent. So I upped and left, and thus started my own equivalent of my forty years wandering the desert. <laughs> yeah. Oh, it can feel like that from time to time, eh? Well, the amount of things I've gone through in the last God four and a bit years now is insane. Because the first shop we were supposed to open in Norellan, um got. Five days before the lease was supposed to have commenced, got pulled out from under me because yeah. a bunch of um, lawyers and and accountants in the premises building were like, we didn't want to share premises with a music shop. Yeah, great. Right. Right. I remember that. Yeah. So I had to rush to find a store, found a shop on Queen Street in Campbelltown, moved in there, started doing repairs from there, and got real busy. And I took on a full-time apprentice. That started kicked off well, didn't it? Yeah, it was going oh, yeah. crazy. I had Matt. He was brilliant. Um, you met Matt, he's a good lad. Yep. So we were doing that and then I had a... He might even the be music watching school. now because he liked it when mm. I posted it before. So. Yeah, nice. <clears throat> but we had, um, we start, opened up the music school as well and we were running out of that. We were there for about 11 months. And then COVID happened. Yeah. I was like... At first it was good. Well, yeah, because I was like, okay, but I, I had the foresight. I'm like, things are going to go bad. I'd spun tuition off into its own premises upstairs, so we had them up there, and I was like, I'm going to move to somewhere smaller and cheaper. So I moved a couple of doors down at the beginning of COVID, got my um, six months rent free and whatnot. Yep. <clears throat> and then, sure enough, it wasn't like, you know, hugely long after all that period went that we um, went into lockdown. And I was lucky I'd moved into the smaller premises because the rent was almost half as much. It was kind of, um, yeah, from there it went crazy. We made some money through the first part of lockdown, then we came out. But before lockdown happened, when we'd moved to the new shop, and I was like, okay, things are happening with COVID, council got rid of the parking on our street. That was the killer. Yeah, so our street was a one-way one -way street, right? There's a bunch of businesses, various things around, but what happened was they got rid of the parking. It used to be 45 degree angle to curb and made it parallel to curb. What happened was people were now no longer willing to go there because they couldn't get parking and the parking they could get was half an hour. Half an hour parking is not enough. So I lost 40% of my trade overnight. Yeah. And I can't then they didn't do their research on it, eh? Or, or they just don't care. Uh, two months later, we went into lockdown. Yeah, again. That hit hard. Oh, we, so that was before the second lockdown? Yeah. Oh, I thought it was after. No, it was before oh. the main lockdown. Right. And then yeah, we so went into you, lockdown. If you guys in the States don't know, we had two lockdowns here. The first one was uh, what, March 2020. And the second one was... Well, no, there was there was the one that affected my area, and then the uh, statewide one. Yeah. We were caught up in the first lockdowns. That's right. You were yeah, because we were in Campbelltown. South, South <laughs> yeah. Region. Yeah. So they tried to keep it localized, and then the second one ended up statewide. Yeah. I don't well, know. no, it's, no. It's, sorry. It's hazy history sorry. Now. They kept it localized yeah. unless you were rich yeah, in the eastern right. suburbs. But then they got locked down in the later one first yeah. in the northern beaches, and we were like, ah, suck yeah. it. So <laughs> basically, we we lost a lot of business came out of it uh, business was never the same in that area yeah. and it was a lot of struggle from there on out and things got worse a lot of the shops on the street left a lot of the um, banks left the marquee retailers left and then eventually the street was nothing but um, job network providers and NDIS providers so basically um, we're talking 
businesses that do nothing but provide um, services to the unemployed and the disabled. Yeah. There's no money in that. So no one was walking along to buy stuff. And I was just lucky that the shop here became available last year. I applied for it and I didn't get it. <laughs> oh, did you? I thought you got it first go. No, I didn't get it first go. Hang on. You want some action? Oh. Here we go. Coppers? Yeah. And they're going to make these people move over and they're not going to do it. Oh, shit. Dumbasses. Every Friday night, every Friday night without ha without bloody hesitation. How'd, uh, how'd Penny Boy go focusing on that moving target? <laughs> <laughs> Not very good, I imagine. <laughs> oh, someone's got road rage too. Yep. That's Sydney. I got this sensory overload. Man. Emu planes, nothing happens. <laughs> <laughs> See, I get to listen to this all the time, but that's because I live on bloody the main road. Oh, yeah. Back on the more Oxley Bypass, a nightmare. Yeah. But um, yeah, so. So I'm just going to do a quick sound check. Does it sound alright everyone? Is it getting washed out? Can you hear what we're saying alright? I probably should have done this at the start. Yeah. <laughs> Is anyone listening? Yeah. That's the key question. Ask us some questions, champions. Any questions you got? That's what we're here for. So, um, what, essentially we know what made you, I've got questions here, but yeah. you've answered half of them in our chat. Um, so what made you pull your trigger was basically getting screwed out, pull the trigger, go out on your own. So you got screwed over. I'm sort of the same. Yep. Um, you can only take so much. And people take advantage of you. When you go the extra mile mm. for an employer, that becomes a new standard. Yep. And then you have to go another extra mile and keep going extra, extra miles. Well, the dickheads that do fuck all yeah. get treated like gold Ooh, and yeah. don't have to do anything. So I got the shits with that. The more effort you put in, the less appreciation you got, and that's what made me go out on mine. And that's why I kept pushing you. I'm like, dude, you have the skills and all the rest of that. Believe in yourself and go open a shop. Go full time. You were a big part in that. Michelle was a big part in yeah. that. Mum and dad, my brother. Um, <coughs> there was a lot of people that convinced me to um, live a life of uh, zero profit and, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, infinite hours. But, uh, <laughs> you know... Uh, oh yes, we've got a uh, we've got Tom there. You know Tom. Um, don't forget the shop also flooded. What a nightmare that was. So yeah, tell, oh, tell us about that. Oh God! So, so that Which about, time? It flooded yeah. multiple times. So we, we have a sort of bipolar weather system here in Australia. Uh, it's the South in was it South Indian Ocean dipole, something like that. Yeah. And uh, we have either neutral or um, La Nina or El Nino. So mm. 2020, about the time that I went to the shop. We're just ending El Nino. So that is drought and high temperatures. <coughs> drought and high... Hey Alex, how you going brother? Yo. Legend. Um, so high temperature, no rain, drought, bushfires, uh, hell on earth. You guys probably remember, anyone follows us or whatever. I was posting about it. I was at the point, I was working at home at that point and I was at the point where I had all my customers' guitars in the van ready to go somewhere. Um, my guitars were second. They were still in the house. Everyone, customers' jobs were in the van, ready to fuck off if the house burnt down. And we had fires out west, not far. Not as close as they came in 2013, but came damn close. And uh, we were preparing to lose everything. And um, it got to the point where customers were um, getting their guitars back and the cases smelled like smoke because my um, workshop was just a garage and it wasn't sealed. So they were complaining about that. Oh, so that's where Brad's Guitar Garage came from. Yeah. <laughs> that's right. Actually, no, Brad's Guitar Garage started with two trestles and a piece of melamine. And I was doing fret hones using a, uh, like one of those Norton chisel sharpening stones. Yeah. <laughs> and a straight edge. And that was Brad's Guitar Garage. Mm. I was working on, I was changing the wheel bearings in my Nissan Patrol. Yep and I was repairing the gearbox in my ZZR250 motorcycle and I had no money <coughs> and I was doing that for a bit of cash on the side mm. for mates and that's how I practiced on my mates guitars. <laughs> <laughs> See in my case I practiced on my own. Uh, yeah. I just do it, did it well, all no, that I way. was doing it in exchange for beer so they, got, go. they got what they got. <laughs> but you know none of them worked out bad and I've seen my work for a long time ago and I still stand by it. It's, of course you get better every year but you don't. You try not to do things that are outside your wheelhouse until you've practiced, and that's the thing I see a lot of other techs try and do. 
they'll take on these jobs and they will destroy someone's guitar because they don't know what they're doing or they're more, more commonly amplifiers mm -hmm. and you should be practicing on your own stuff buy yeah. yourself a project amp work on that have it as a never finished project just keep improving it yep. keep learning that's how you learn these things not you, on someone's you, you, you someone's... put an ad out on Facebook saying hey I want to buy some broken equipment and you'll get 95 emails and messages from people going hey I got this for you Mm. buy it you're not going to make money on it but you use it as the experience the same as anything else yeah you know troubleshoot learn from that but back to what we were saying before what were we talking about ah oh, that's right the bushfires and in my case yeah, the shop fires. flooded yes the shop yeah. flooding yeah. so i had my um tuition business flood as well twice and then my shop the entire rear half flooded as well because we we were inset into a hill so, so, yeah. so we had bushfires all the way up till 2020 and then we had nothing but rain for three years. Yep. And that was three years of La Nina, which we've never had before. Yep. I, I, if we did, it was 1800s or something. Yep. Um, don't quote me on that. <laughs> but point being, we had nothing but rain, high humidity, uh, torrential rain for like three years. Yeah. I, I lost about $23,000 worth of camera Oof. equipment in the flooding. Always be insured, people. Yeah. Always. Thank insurance. God I was. Factor in insurance <laughs> into your hourly rate, like we've been talking about. Ad yeah. nauseum to other techs as well. Eventually, my plan is I'm actually going to. Set, I've, I've, got, I've got some stuff sorted. I want to actually set up a channel to just discuss this yeah. business stuff because. Like, like Lewis Rossman's thing? Kind of like Lewis Rossman, except less stupid. <laughs> some of the stuff he says, I'm just like, oh, it is so American. Ah, uh, okay. Oh, it's Let, just. Let's stop there. Yeah. <laughs> I like Lewis, but yeah, he can he can come across a little bit uh, abrasive at times. But hey, what technical person doesn't? Yeah. So we've got a question here from Gazcal. Mm. Um, would you buy a modern production line PC circuit board layout amp? Yes. Fender Marshall. If not, what would you go for? Budget thirty five hundred. Man. Okay. So first things first, PCBs are awesome. Yes. When they're done right. No, they... Point, uh, not point to point, because point to point doesn't exist anymore. Yeah. But tag strip and turret board amps and eyelet board amps can be good if they're done well. However, they're less consistent. They're more prone to interference and noise, and you can only do so much with them. So you're limited in what you can do. So we need to kind of isolate that question in a couple of points. PCB amps are great, provided they're not Mesa. Mesa <laughs> can go to hell. There are some amps that are made on turrets or tags or whatever else that are done well and they're relatively consistent. You're going to be spending big money for them. You're saying 3,400, mm. so that opens the gates quite yeah. a bit. Yeah, but, but the question is as well, what flavor are you after? Mm. I mean, if we're just talking an amp at that price point for $3,500, if I had $3,500 to buy an amp... High gain, clean channel, two channel, three channel. Channel? If I was going to spend that kind of money, if we're talking brand new, then <clears throat> brand, I'm just trying to think, brand new, I would probably go... I think all of us mm. techs agree, Alex. Um, people have got to start listening to techs, not marketing channels and shill channels. Yeah. And that's another one of my points I'll get to in a moment. <clears throat> if we don't freeze... It's like 16 degrees here, and I'm fucking freezing my tits off. <laughs> I, I hate winter. I'm going to set this focus. Hang on. So, yeah. So, yeah, 3,500. In my case, if I was to go for something, and I was going to go for something that was, um, say, versatile and half decent at kind of what it did, in all honesty, I would probably go for a Marshall JVM 410. Mm -hmm. They're not bad. They're not great, yeah. but they're versatile for what they do. Spend the rest on coke. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but if I if if I took that money and I put it into second hand. Oh, you specified. Yeah. Sorry, carry on. Ah, okay. single channel, clean pedal platform. Okay, that leaves a lot more options yeah. in that sort of price range. I'd, I'd personally, <laughs> personally, I'd probably get uh, like a Vibrolux, old school, do it up, make it bulletproof. Um, or maybe a twin, if you've got a strong back. I mean, even outside of that, 3500 bucks. you want a pedal platform, you want something like that, Vox AC30, C2X. Yeah. 30 watts, plenty well enough, 
the um, X model with the blue back sounds phenomenal. They're reliable. Throw they they take pedals like the proverbial mother that everyone has, yeah. <laughs> and they're you know they're they're good solid amps. They'll give you enough volume for playing live. Oh, they're stupid loud. Yeah. You can play them at home and they're not too shabby either. But more importantly, if you do want to venture outside of all your overdrive from pedals, yeah. you push one of them right to the verge of overdrive and that's mm. the magic zone. That's where cool things happen. Yeah. Not particularly pushed into massive overdrive, but yeah. just, just venturing into it on the pick attack. Yeah, no, they're, they're, they're pretty solid. The um, orange Tremlord 30s, they're excellent as well. I not find them. <laughs> They're kind of like the um, orange take on like a tweed style amp, but they've actually got a, um, a trem that has dual speed controls. Oh, what? Yeah, so you can switch between two speeds. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Single channel reverb and trem with two trem speeds. Does the oscillator just like click, go to the other speed, or does it gradually click quick? Yeah? Okay. Yeah. Yeah, wow. So it's, it'll be good if you could have a pedal, but then we're getting back to organ stuff. So, have any Shul Channel guitar gear influences gotten, uh, I can't see it. Under the like Aussie that. law. That's like the <clears throat> Aussie law. Um, gotten fined under the Aussie law. No. So, okay, I, I think this might be referring to, I thought this was worldwide, but maybe it's not. Um, you have to disclose it, if you're paid. This is YouTube, yeah. yeah. So, you have to say if you're doing paid promotions. <clears throat> as far as I know, no. <clears throat> Uh, that could be pretty hard to enforce, so it's a bit like jaywalking. Yeah. It's sort of there to deter, but doesn't really... It's, it's also one of those things of how do, you, how do you prove that someone's opinion isn't their own and that they're being entirely influenced by it, it's which... It's hard to prove, yeah. Yeah. It's, it's one of those things where if you're paid directly by the company, yes, you have to say it. And what determines payment? Do they get to just keep the amp they're reviewing? Well, no. Like, for example, you get guys like, um, what's his name, um, Bergs. The bold dude, Aussie guy, oh, I've forgotten his name. He plays with a bunch of Aussie guys as well. He's a big, you, big YouTube reviewer. I, I don't watch um, YouTube. I just... He sells a lot of the stuff that he gets. He gets stuff and then he buys it and he sells it on. Yeah. Um, yeah. I was, I was laughing about this today when Lyle was talking. He said he, <coughs> he doesn't watch YouTube, he just creates on it. <laughs> yeah, meanwhile, I watch a lot of it, but I don't watch any of the um, pedal shows. I don't watch no. any of that stuff. None of that stuff interests me because it's just... I don't want it. It, it doesn't. None well, of it's of interest. It's a bit of feedback. I think yeah. we've chosen a great venue because I think there's a band about to start. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Had been thinking about going for hand wired due to present PCB issues. Okay, first question. What PCB issues? Second of all, do you know enough about the PCBs to be able to ascertain whether it's actually something isolated to a particular brand or what? Because... Yeah, so you might yeah. be referring to the conductive PCB issues with... Um, Marshall, mm. so that's a JCM 2000 TSL and DSL. Mm. That was a production problem. Um, it wasn't necessarily <coughs> a design problem. Um, so they had a problem with the resin that they made the circuit boards out of, and it became conductive with high temperature over time. That wasn't necessarily a design fault on Marshall's behalf. However, they should have covered it, and it should have been a class action. But musicians are too hard to organise. In Australia, they covered the cost of those boards up until about two years ago. Right. And yep. That's right when I started buying. Yeah, well, that's good. That's because Australia is also like, you know, we've got much better um, laws on that kind of stuff. But as far as like stuff like PCB issues, the only ones I can think of are Fender using the same crap traces on their amps and single sided boards as they have for years. They've just improved them. Apparently. I've seen on the new ones. The latest revision, it only yep. took them 20 years. Yeah. 30 years. Um, and then the other thing is Mesa Boogies because they still use goddamn Letra set for everything. Yeah. The pads are too small, the traces are too small, they run in the wrong places, and they're a nightmare. Now, Mesa Boogie is super weird because I have seen a digital layout, I'm not going to say where I got it, but I've seen a digital layout for the uh, it's a dual rectifier solo head, mm. and it is, it was designed on a computer. I don't know which rev. Uh, the three channel. Or the I've got one. it at home, but it was designed on a computer. So there's no excuse for having pads the size of a fucking yeah. cubic hair when you design it on a computer. <laughs> and there's no excuse for having a component over here that is pairing a circuit over here. Yeah. Like. I just, uh, it's flogging a dead horse. If you want to buy a Mesa, buy a Mesa, but I will not ever tell you to buy a Mesa. <laughs> Let's put it that way. If you, if you enjoy it, great. 
play it forever, I hope it lasts forever. And I, I, I can add one extra thing to that in that because I did session guitar work and whatnot, I have owned almost every Mesa model that there is. My main my main like touring rig for years was a Simul 290 and a Tri-Axis. Yep, that's what I had. That was my first rig. Yep, I, I had that. as dropped big money on it. Yeah. I've owned it every like rig. Hey, hey, they sounded great. You just have to know how to dial them oh, in. Oh, sure, that's what everyone says. <laughs> I, I knew it because they were Mark Series Amp. Hey. But I've owned most of the Mesas that you can own over the years, and they're not bad sounding amps, but the reality is there are other amps that do the same thing that are built better. There's nothing yeah. magical about them you can't recreate through other stuff. That's right. Um, so I thought that maybe I had it done. So I sold that. I actually mm. traded it with a bloke who's yeah. some Icelandic metal crazy guy. <laughs> um, he lived out this way, actually. I went and traded yeah. it. Did a direct trade with the Triaxis for mm. the DC-10 2 by 12 combo, 100 oh, yeah. water. And it sounded exactly the same. Like, exactly the same. See, the thing is, both of those are Mark Series amps. The Mark Series amps were designed by an idiot who didn't know what he was doing and just kept throwing extra gain stages at it. So, this is where we get into a little bit of dry dry stuff. For everyone that tells us, like, you know, mess the boogie, we, we've been there. We've tried yeah. them. We've done everything we could because we, like a lot of you, thought they were top-class amps. And then we found out the very fucking hard way that they're not. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, the, the Tri-Axis and similar were based on the Mark series, and the Mark series were amps that were based on modification of a Fender-style circuit. So the EQ is in the very beginning of the gain stage with a bunch of it afterwards, so you're adding so much gain on those low frequencies, and it wasn't until Mike Soldano and some others started going, hey, let's add filtration between the stages to drop the bass and add it back in at the last stage, yeah, that's how you do it. which is why a Mark series amp, you have to turn the bass and the mid down on the first stages in the regular EQ and then scoop the mids on the out foot section. And then use the And then that's graphic. what brings it, yeah. And if you don't have the graphic, there's the contour, uh, what did they call it? Contour knob? Something like that. They uh, simulated. The only, the only one that had the contour was the F-Series. Ah, that's what yeah. yeah. I the F-Series had that. I have noticed a drop in Mesa prices recently. Really? Because they're going up everywhere else. Well, I've seen a few F-Series and a few calibers mm. going for under a grand. Well, it's because the Caliber Series amps and similar, they're the bastard childs no one wants because like, all the forum guys are like, oh, no, they suck. They, they sound like shit. The DC-10 is one of my favorite amps to record with. It was a beautiful amp when you knew what to do with it. Well, they named it Studio, didn't they? <laughs> <laughs> That's right. So what's this? Um, so going back up. Okay, let's, let's go. I know nothing, but yeah, overheating trace issues. You'll get that on amps as well that are point that are um, turret based. When you get idiots that put the um, bypass caps under the resistors for the cathode outputs, yeah. <laughs> or various other things. On a PCB, there are bad designs that place critical components in the wrong spot. So a PCB that's well designed is always gonna be hunky-dory, so don't worry too much about that okay. if they're good. Sir, um, Fredman, the any of the Soldano stuff, the new stuff is brilliant because it's all um, it's all bad. But sorry, boutique amp distribution. It's not bad. Yeah. Um, that stuff's all good. There's plenty of good things that are there. So don't worry too much about that. Just avoid the ones that us techs go on about as being shit. <laughs> so there's that question. Um, Alex Catlow, Mesa Boogie is just an SLO clone, right? Wrong. Yeah, no, it's not, that's bullshit, and it's a thing that, buddy, a lot of people like to spew out. They say that about PV as well, um, the PV with the multiple stages and stuff. I oh, can. We've got, we got some lighting for the motorcycle. That's good. Yeah, looks great. Oh, there it goes. I can point out ten different amps that use multiple gain stages with a cold cathode clipper and a DC coupled, um, a DC coupled, buddy, cathode follower stage as well in them. They're not just used in Soldano. Soldano was unique in that he placed the EQ in the last stage in the amp and he was putting a lot of those gain stages with a lot of attenuation between them and the filtration. I'm just gonna grab a beer. Sweet. Mesa, Mesa did a similar thing, but so did everyone else. When anyone does it, Fender came out with the basement and put in a four, a three band EQ with a presence control. Everyone was like, brilliant. Marshall literally cloned the JTM 45 from the basement with a couple of bits and pieces. That's what design and engineering is. First company came out with an SUV for cars. Everyone's gonna start doing them. So they're not one-to-one -one clones. They took key points from the SLO to make an amp. 
However, they also added a bunch of dumb shit to it. So that's kind of that's that's kind of the SLO talk on that one there. Uh, let's see. So Gooden, so many chemical plants have major fires or extended production shutdowns since the pandemic. I'm betting we'll see cheap conductive PC boards again, two refineries on fire in the US. Well, that's kind of going to happen when you have so few bloody regulations and stuff over there. It's kind of a bit of a nightmare. But I don't know how much of the PCB chemicals and materials are done over in the US. A lot of stuff is, um, what's he, uh, done in China. You've also got Japan and Korea that make a lot of um, petrochemicals and resins and various other things for industry too. So I can't imagine there's going to be a huge issue with it because the, the the Marshalls were a unique situation on that. It happened with heat and age and Marshall knew about it as well. They just didn't like stop it. Uh, oh, Alex Catlow, it was a joke. Right, yep. Well, I wanted to address it for those who didn't know that kind of thing because... A lot of people do believe that. A lot of people believe what they read online, which is a nightmare. Uh, Okie dokie. Gazcal67. Had thoughts, sir. Okay, we'll follow your comments. Yes. Sir, our world-class amps. Sir, our brilliant. John, sir, is an absolute legend, a gentleman, and his guitars are brilliant. If you've got the money for it, that's the one. Yeah. I'm really hoping sometime later this year we'll be able to start stocking some sir stuff. Same here. I was on the phone over the other week. Nice. But, uh, yeah, the capital, mate, the capital. <laughs> yeah. So I just went to the bar. There's, mm. like, six people there. Yep. Old mate is the slowest barman I've ever seen. <laughs> He's just <laughs> having a chat. Nice. Just pouring really slow. Yeah. Uh, I'll go. I'll try again in a sec. So. What else we got? Uh, boxes next here, next right? question, mate. Next question. All right. What is it? You might not like this one, but what is it that keeps you going when times are shit? Pure, unadulterated rage and the and the idea that I refuse to give in so that those who said I would never make it have nothing to hold against me. There you go, that's a pretty solid reason. I literally do not know how to stop and yeah, I will just keep going. So when I'm stressed or whatever else, I will, anyone who knows me knows that I will yell and scream into the void, especially on Facebook and other places. But I don't stop. I keep going and I will figure out some kind of ridiculous way to get around a situation as best as I can. And just try and get ahead. It's hard. It is, man. When you're a one-man show, it can get a bit lonely too. Like That's why a lot of us techs keep in touch with each other. We're all fighting the same fight. I don't know, I don't know if it's a good fight. but <laughs> and, and this is the thing as well as i found is that... A lot of us will, you know, we, 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 gyrate, we gravitate towards other half-decent um, techs. So we like to talk, but there's it's little things we know. Just half-decent people, too. I mean, like, yeah. there's a lot of techs that are complete fuckwits and no one speaks to. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But they're, like, and they're well, all, not here. I'm yeah. just saying in general, you know. There are ones out there that we see the work of, and yes, we will say straight up to a customer, or we will say online, do not go there because yeah. they can't I, be trusted. I pull back a bit from that. I, don't, I can't. I don't, yeah, I know no. you can't. <laughs> I just say, look, here's what's wrong, let's fix it. I try to be objective, um, but I, I keep them fully informed throughout the whole process. And I think that's what's so different with us and yeah. a lot of other techs, because a lot of other techs, you get a single line, amp repair, $400. No yeah. itemization, nothing. Um, I try to be as open as I can about the process, and of course that takes a bit more time for the paperwork, the quoting, all that kind of stuff, but I think it inspires a lot of confidence, and I've found it works. It probably gets me more repairs than I can do, and then yeah. everyone gets upset because it takes six months. And this is, this is a thing that a lot of people don't understand, especially here in Australia. There are so few techs now. Because unlike, say, the US, where you have a million and one people who were in the army and did electronics and could pick up a book and go, okay, cool, I understand, go buy some surplus electronics and learn how to fix audio gear, here in Australia, there are very few who have that skill and they're either hobbyists or people like us that have fallen into it and learnt stuff and wanted to get better at it because it was a passion that we had. So, for example, here in Sydney, there have been a couple of techs that have passed away there have been some that have recently retired because they're in their 60s. 
and there have been others that have moved went to other areas. Retiring in your 60s. Imagine oh. retiring! <laughs> My God, that's a thought! And then you, you've got some other blokes overseas that couldn't retire if, if they had a gun held to their head. Yeah. Like, like our man Roland Lumby. <laughs> yeah. yeah. He will, the Amp Clinic UK, he will yep. never stop. No. He said he'll he'll die with a soldering iron in his hand, he will not yeah. stop. And yeah, I, I, I believe him when he says that. We're kind of lucky in that with a lot of us techs and people who like, you know, get out online. I, I know I haven't posted much up on YouTube because I haven't had staff and I've been working my ass off, but I'll, I'll get back more into it. But those of us who are online as well, a lot of us know each other. We like to, ex you know, we, we, we like to sort of have each other's back and be positive amongst each other because, you know, we don't all know everything. No. There are times when there are techs out there who I look up to and they ask a question and I can answer it and I go, wow. Oh, wow. But Maybe I'm not useless. It feels good. It yeah. feels affirming. Yep. Um, and usually... It's wrong. <laughs> <laughs> Im imposter syndrome is a terrible thing. Oh, imposter syndrome is a big one, but that's because I am an imposter, and that's what every imposter syndrome sufferer will tell you. Yeah. I am an imposter. I don't have any certifications or qualifications. The only thing I'm qualified in is music technical production from TAFE, for fuck's sake. I'm that's, not like, all, that's all obsolete now, because yeah. everything's... I, I, I never even finished high school. Yeah, there you yeah, go. We haven't finished high school. But that's the thing. There's, there's no way you can go to learn how to fix a tube amp. Yeah. It's as simple as that. Particularly not here in Australia. So, And that's what's wild as well is that nowadays, like guys like us, there are, there are those in the industry who do like the modern DSP stuff or synth stuff or whatnot. They don't know how to do a tube. And then you get the guys who know how to do a tube, but they don't know modern stuff. But people like us, we try and keep a bit of a broad spectrum of skills so we can work on anything from the 30s up to the 2030s. Why do you think I'm bald, mate? <laughs> I don't know, just because you wanted to do your best Vin Diesel? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I, um, I get that quite a bit. People are surprised that I do instruments. Mm. Like they assume that I've got an instrument guy and I'm yeah. the amp guy or vice versa, whatever yep. they're talking about to me. Yep. And I, I tell them, no, I do both, and then it is pretty rare. We're the only two in Sydney that do it. Yeah. In the most literal sense, I can't think of a single other person that does instruments and electronics to the degree that we do. There are some guys out there that will do like the occasional pedal repair, or maybe do like some basic amp repair, but no yeah, one that does... There's guys yeah. in Australia, but I think Sydney, I can't think of anyone either. I'm probably just forgetting someone, but, mm. but yeah, like, and then getting into the finish work as well. Um, yeah. That's another whole other ball game entirely. Uh, I only have it because I came from joinery, mm. so shop fitting and fine joinery. Um, so spray painting was one of the first jobs I ever did because I wanted to do it. Um, so I've, I've just got jack of all trades shit that it's just built up over years, and here we are. Yeah. Anyway, so I've got a few questions. No, we don't. Oh, don't we? No, nah, not really. Chinese tube valve oh, semiconductor plant suffers a fire, and the world prices of those components soar. Yeah. Yeah. Well, he's, talk he's talking about the um, up up top. There was the yeah. um, comment about their conductor resonance. But what's that one? Scroll up a bit. Yep. In my uh, Lenovo little skills quick cursor yeah. <laughs> you're touching the nub the nub I can't do it from this angle this is wrong uh, uh, there we yeah, go, we go. Uh, good old arrows uh, I'm a little OCD wait, wait. Jerry London says I'm a little OCD when I repair an amp I upgrade the components 2 watt resistor for a 1 watt uh, well, straight away 100 volt, 100 volt cap for a 63 eh, yeah. that's fine same for diodes. Am I crazy fooling myself? Is bulletproof? Diodes, sure, because the diode failure mode is going short circuit, and no one wants a short circuit diode. Uh, caps, 100 volts, fine. 63 volt, yep. It's, the, it's not going to fail due to over voltage, unless something else goes wrong. The resistor wattage, sometimes people use resistors like a fuse. Um, screen resistors, for example. Uh, if you upgrade a resistor because of blue, you've got to look at wire blue. Um, is it a common problem? Is there a service bulletin for that device that says, sorry, we, we screwed up here, we should have put a 2 watt in instead of a 1 watt? If there isn't one of them floating around in the interwebs, chances are it's supposed to be a 1 watt and something else is causing it to dissipate too much. So that can be a bit fraught with danger. There are some situations where it's fine um, and some situations where it's not. 
for example, when we, when we design a circuit, because you know, I, I do some design stuff in that as well, we're designing it within specs so that there's enough margin of tolerance for a component not to fail immediately, but that if it is going to fail as a result of something going wrong, that it's not going to take out everything around it as well. Yeah. That's Check out Brad's video on failures of resistors. Oh, the res resistor yeah. blowjob. Because, <laughs> for example, there was a post that we've seen online a couple of weeks ago about someone who wanted to put two watt resistors in place of half watt ones in a balanced circuit on a heater filament. Yeah, and there's a reason that they're half watt. Yeah. Whereas ideally, you put those resistors in. And you put half watt ones that are fusible. Yeah. In other words, if there's a short between the anode and the heater, which does happen from time to time, it's going to cause those resistors to open up and no current flow, no heat problem solved. If you put two watt resistors in there and there's no fuse, there's no protection there, and you've got the ability for just all of the current to dump from the um, anode or the HT on an amp into the ground through that resistor, well, one of two things is going to happen. That resistor is going to heat up to the point where it's going to burn the board, or you're going to have a transformer dumping its entire current capability and more through a short to ground and take out your transformer. The HT supply only outputs a couple of hundred milliamps tops. That's a couple of hundred milliamps straight to ground. Yeah, you're going to possibly burn up a transformer. So, in other words, higher voltage component ratings, yes, if where it's going to fit in. Higher wattage rating, only if it's suitable. Sometimes, for example, on tube amps, the um, screen group resistors are too low a wattage, and we know that. So we'll bump up the value and bump up the wattage. Like on a, um, a fender, oftentimes they use like a 2 watt uh, screen group resistor. That's not enough. 470 ohm. Yeah. Yep. Bump it up to a 1K 5 watt. Perfect. Golden. It's gonna it's gonna last forever. And if it does something does go wrong, that higher rating on the um, on the resistance is gonna limit current, and therefore the higher rating on the um, wattage as well is gonna protect prevent it from burning up. That's one of the situations where they probably didn't take all use cases into account. So a lot of people will get amps and just dime them, and then basically the screen grid's trying to be the plate. Yep. High watts are a good example of yeah. why they uh, of them dying because of that. And uh, this is these amps were designed when attenuators didn't exist. <laughs> so now people get an attenuator and they're putting mm. one watt into the speaker and it's dimed in a hundred watt amp. It's not a use case scenario they had in mind when they designed that amp because they thought it would be hurting you if you turned it up that much. Yeah. <laughs> So yeah, there's that as well. That's what we got there. Interesting chat, fellas. I'm a school teacher in Melbourne, but one day aspire to run a small shop selling gear on consignment, fixing amps. So, yeah, turn a hobby into a business. Well, Ooh. that brings me to my next question. This this one actually comes from Jason from Head First Amplification, but it also uh, yep. refers back to that comment. When turning your hobby or passion into a profession, how do you manage the risk of it becoming something you fall out of love with? That one is... It's a tough one. Oftentimes, if people say, I want to turn my hobby or my passion into a career, I turn around and say, don't. <laughs> because it isn't going to be enjoyable. Mm. For example, I own a music shop. Most of my day is spent putting deets and stuff online, fixing instruments and cleaning things and dealing with customers that don't know what they want. For me, however, I like sales. I used to be a salesman. I also like fixing stuff, not a problem. But there is a lot of monotony to it. So you've got to find a facet of what you're interested in that is going to be sustainable and enjoyable and keep your hobby the hobby. So you keep playing, you keep doing that kind of stuff because, you know, in my, in my case, if I'm going, all right, cool, I've got the shop here and whatnot, I still want to go play in a band. If I was, you know, just running the shop and doing all the stuff, the retail things, it might get a little bit boring, but I'm also a little bit more um, stubborn, I suppose. The only thing is, if you're going into the realms of doing consignment sales, that is going to be a headache. It's going to be a nightmare. Why? Because 
We don't actually offer consignment sales in my shop. I refuse to do it because you need, in New South Wales anyway, a second-hand dealer's license. You need to log items into the COPS database. You've got to hold them for a certain period of time. And you don't control the pricing on the goods. You don't control the quality. Someone's going to come in and they're going to sell their equipment. Yeah, you're not going to spend money on it to have it up on the wall, but you're going to have it on the wall for six months, a year, because they don't want to sell it for a reasonable price. The instrument isn't in good condition, you can't sell it for much. We trade in equipment and we do some stuff you know, with um, purchasing used equipment from overseas. So I decide what the prices are, not the person who's putting it up on the wall. So if you want to go down the route of doing like a small retail thing, find a niche, find a small section of the market you can cover that'll do you well. If you want to sell second-hand equipment, sell second-hand equipment, but look into your state second-hand dealer license requirements. It's not easy. Also, it's going to take months, if not a year or more, in order to make money out of it. Businesses don't turn a profit immediately. The overheads are huge. There is a lot behind it. So, yeah. I, I always, I'll always say, start your own business, do whatever, but be realistic about it. You will probably keep working a second job until the business picks up, unless you have almost six figures of cash behind you. There's a lot behind starting a business people don't take into consideration. All right, so going back up to the Gazcal, let's see. Sir Ombre, $36.99, yeah. They're a good amp, by all means. Sir Ombre's are good, the um, Fredman Pink Taco and the um, uh, Dirty Shirley, they're also great amps. Look around second hand for them, you'll find plenty of them out there. They're well designed and well made, so they're going to be like, you know, you'll, you'll buy a second hand one and they're not gonna crap out on you. So don't worry too much about that. You know, don't be afraid of secondhand equipment. Just know what you're looking for when you're buying it. These are good quality amps that people are looked after. They're amps that have um, only come out in the last couple of years and they're not huge in Australia, so they've not been thrashed. They're not 25-year-old Marshalls. They're not old Fender Hot Rods and Deluxes. They're in decent condition. Uh, what else have we got here? 18 watts, yeah. In terms of power, a lot of people think power, 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 I must have it. But, 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 and it's a big but, power in amplifiers is measured logarithmically. A 1 watt amp is half of the power of a 10 watt amp. And a 10 watt amp is half of the power of a 100 watt amp. Ergo, a 1 watt amp is one quarter of the real world power of a 100 watt amp. 18 watts is plenty. We sell mostly 15 to 30 watt amps in the shop, and 100 watt amps are oftentimes special order items. No one's buying them anymore. When you're in a gig, your sound guy is gonna put a mic in front of your amp and mic you up that way. And they're gonna be grateful that you don't have a 100 watt stack that's dimed. You don't need that kind of volume anymore, you know? Uh, let's see, blah, blah, blah. present DSL 401 is too much, no idea why. Didn't put watts in the top of that, needs good service or skip, blah, blah, blah. Been looking at the 22 watt deluxe or Bandmaster. I mean, the DSL 401's a great amp. DSL 401, other than a couple of issues with the cheap caps they put in them, which are, we've, we've done a couple of cap jobs on them because they do go short, are a great sounding amp that you know does cleans quite well that does the overdrive quite well um, good for pedals if you're worried about the volume turn it down turn it down for you know what you need you're not going to cook the output on them anyway because they run them way too cold for that they're running el34s nowhere near their limit so you're not getting output saturation on it regardless it's mostly the um, preamp side which if you're wanting a um, pedal based platform that's what you need you want something that's got enough of the headroom to hit it 
I worked in retail hi-fi audio sales for 12 plus years from Gooden. It's a hard way to make a living, especially when pay is largely derived from sales commissions. No financial security insurance and benefits in the USA. Yeah, the USA is a, um, a terrifying prospect for a lot of us. It's, um, yeah, it's, it's horrifying. I've just hired a new staff member for the shop and he works with us and his pay is about, you know, 49, 50 grand a year. Not the worst thing in the world. He gets his superannuation for his, um, you know, retirement at the end and he doesn't have to worry about things like healthcare or insurance or anything like that. In return, all I ask for is that he turns up, works well and does what's needed and we make our money out of a mixture of the service side and from some sales. Hi-fi sales are a bit of a different thing as well. That's a, that's a weird ball game. We, we're getting into it somewhat, but that's because we get a lot of um, vintage and second-hand equipment from Japan for sale. So, yeah, a lot of Denon stuff, a lot of, um, uh, what else, Denon, Victor, JBL, a lot of JBL stuff over there too, which is kind of odd. But there's a lot of um, really nice hi-fi equipment from Japan that's just well looked after that doesn't sell for huge money over there but would sell for more over here. I only ever use my DSL clean and yeah, I run it low. Cool. I mean, unless you really want to change the amp and go for something different, what's wrong with the DSL? Why, why, why change it? The only thing I would say is they're a bit on the heavy side. That's okay. They're a good amp. If you're changing something because you feel that there's something better out there but you don't know what it is, it's going to be a bit of a fool's errand and you're going to spend a lot of money for no point. If it's just not working for you tonally, great, go out there and find something that will. There's a lot of different choices out there. So, Let's see. Uh, me, what's my opinion on the tone circuit behind the wall bases? Don't know, we'd have to look at the schematic on it. Um, what is the schematic on it? Let me see. Because, uh, yeah, wall bases are kind of weird. Let's see, what do we got? Uh, Show me the tone circuit. Oh, I think she What's this? Yeah, but over there. I can't even see it, I have to read it later, but yeah. Tones, way too dark. Have you thought about turning the, pre the presence up and the treble up on your, on your amp? There is no limit of treble on those amps. Um, in fact, you can drive them to the point of almost piercing your ears. Whenever you're, t whenever you're listening to the sound of an amp as well, put your head near the speaker. Not like up against it, but if you're standing up here and your amp is down here, you're hearing reflected frequencies. You're not hearing the treble because treble gets absorbed easily. Take your head, put it down near speaker level and listen because that's what's going to be heard by the microphone. But if you're having difficulty with the treble on that amp, go for a Vox AC 15 or AC 30. Treble on tap for days. Tone King Imperial Mark II is 20 watts and has a useful attenuator, more power than I'll ever need in small gigs. The problem is Tone King in Australia are very, very expensive. Very. Um, not bad amps. The old ones were weird with that weird sandwich board construction, but the new ones are all right. Um, ultra linear design, some of them too. No presence. 209 DSL 401, not the DSL 40. I mean, even those old 2009 ones, the old original um, JCM 2000 DSL 401s, still, they got plenty of treble on tap. Turn your presence control up. If it's if if there's no if there's not enough treble there for you, then it could be possibly something to do with a um, component in the amp that's not working well. Can't hear it. Don't know. Alternatively, go down, go give a try to a um, Vox AC30. See what that, see how that works for you. That was the slowest bomb <laughs> ever witnessed.
Nice. That was ridiculous. So, what did I miss? Nothing? Okay. Nothing, just me ranting non-stop about a various bunch of things, including um, some of the amps and various bits and pieces, and ask, someone was asking about um, opening up the small shop for consignment sales, and I'm like, yeah, I mean, yeah. We, we, do, we do our hobbies, lad, and we make our money out of it, but consignment sales shops are a nightmare you've got to have a second hand dealers license at least in new south wales you make no money out of it you've got to like have stuff sitting there and then you if someone wants to negotiate you've got to try and ping pong with the owner if you want to sell second hand go out and buy the second hand stuff but as i said with anyone go out and buy a bunch of um, yeah, go out there get a bunch of cash because a business is not going to turn a profit for at least 12 to 18 months it takes time for people to know you're there you're not going to hit the ground running maybe 36 in my case <laughs> I finally got to the point of making money and then everything happened <laughs> I haven't taken a wage in two years it sometimes feels like Everything's fighting you. Start, yeah. Right. But by the same token, there's another two people looking at your shop. Yeah. Where, where I am now, we'll start picking up. We'll make money. It's just, unfortunately, we've got a lot of debt that happened from COVID and everything that else that happened afterwards, which makes it difficult. And in your case, you're still trying to find your niche, trying to find your thing. I know what my niche is. Mm. Fix shit. Never see daylight. And make no money. <laughs> hurry, up and get, hurry up and get a goddamn apprentice. Yeah. You need one. Yeah. Because you could make a lot out of that and be able to palm off a lot of those smaller jobs and raise your rates higher. You deserve it. You're too good. Uh, raise your rates higher. Pull your tongue out of my ass. <laughs> <laughs> uh, thanks, Dad. Dad is my apprentice. There we go. There he is. Yeah, but just in future, use the Variac. Use the Variac. Use the Variac. <laughs> Uh, that's what fuses are for. <laughs> yeah, you know, the good old 50 amp fuse, shove it in there. There we go, use that as a fuse. That's aluminum. I've had quite a few people ask me to just come in and just do anything they can to help. Nah. The problem is you end up spending time telling them what to do before they can do it. So now everything's just taken twice as long. I'm sure, eventually they'll get some momentum, but essentially there's no point doing it unless they're willing to stick it out for the long run. So then you actually get return on your time investment in training them. Like, I had a full-time apprentice and he was great, but, and this is coming back to that point that we had before, he lost the passion for music. Yeah. It just wasn't there anymore. And so he, you know, he wasn't looking for another job, but someone, a mate of his, turned around and made him an offer he couldn't refuse. And I, I couldn't blame him, in all honesty. Someone turns around and offers you more money and it's in an industry away and, like, you know, yeah, you've lost your tough. passion. Yeah. So eventually I'll get another of, apprentice again, but in at the time. Day, at the end of the day, whatever you got to do to pay the bills, and if you get a good offer that you can't refuse, you got to take it. Yeah. It's a bit different with some of the other staff that I had that have caused issues for me and various other ones, but that's a different ball. That's a whole different thing. Yeah. And yeah. That's the other thing. Um, often it's hard to interact with people while you're doing this job too. Like you almost need to be in a darkened room locked away somewhere figuring shit out. And I had said to six a few times, that's probably my preferred working environment. A darkened basement somewhere just where everyone's leaving me alone. <laughs> yeah. I, I'm very social and I love having a chat and that's bad because I end up chatting to customers for ages. Yeah. And then I realise 45 minutes is gone. The person's come to pick up their guitar that I said would be ready that day and it's not even strung up yet. Yeah. Yeah, it can be tough. So someone saw videos of huge Japanese hi-fi stores. Yes. They have videos of Japanese music stores. I actually shot one last time I was over there in Japan. I just never released it. Um, next time I'm over there, I do intend on doing another video series.
All right, let's try that. Yeah, there we go. We're back. Did you miss us? All right. So to return to my point before, Japanese music stores are a hell of a thing. There is, everyone knows of the Chanamizu, which is the district in Tokyo where there's a street that has a bunch of secondhand music stores. Great if you want to go there and you want to look at a bunch of really expensive secondhand equipment. Thousands of guitars there, really expensive for what they are. <laughs> no, <laughs> yeah. Thanks, Rax FX. No, no signal backwards. Yep. <laughs> However, there's also a lot of music stores out in various areas you go to, and there's really cool stuff. And you can find shops that are just dedicated to one style of instrument, like acoustics or secondhand, um, like amps or something. There was a shop I went to that had four clons in the window. Cool. Um, but there's also places you can go to, which they call recycle stores. Companies like Hard Off, funny name, <laughs> um, Second Street and Book Off and all the others, where you can go in there and you will find things that will blow your absolute mind. That's why it's called Hard Off. Yeah. I, last time I was over in. there, yeah, last <laughs> time I was over there, I paid for my entire hey, holiday quite just from three purchases. I bought an ESP MX250, the James Hetfield model, in the original ESP road case, in near mint condition, for 800 Australian dollars. I bought a Fender Super Reverb, a 1965 oh, blackface, for $1,100. <laughs> I bought a Hamer TB4, the um, sorry FB4, in the Nikki Six black and white stripes. They made like 50 of them for 450 bucks. I sold those three things and paid for my entire holiday because I knew where to go, where to look, and what to buy. Are you listening, Michelle? You better be listening. That's why we go over there with empty suitcases. Legit, yeah. <laughs> but there's also ways you can ship stuff back to Australia yeah. using Sagawa and e EMS. I've got to talk to you about that. Yeah. Because we're planning to go to Japan about this time next year. So. Yep. Yeah, we're, we're going back over at some point. But there's a lot of, there's a lot of good stuff over there. And then the hi-fi stores as well. The hi-fi stuff in these stores. You can get crazy stuff. And it's insane. Like, we work with companies in Japan like these businesses, and they furnish us with a lot of this equipment secondhand for sale here. And the things that we get, I look at it and I go, this thing's never been used. And it's it just, whoa. So, yeah, Japan, awesome place to go visit. Well worth it for checking out music equipment. And I'd highly recommend visiting the northern part of the main island, an area called Tohoku. Which is where the where Fukushima is and where the um, devastation was from obviously the 311 earthquake. You will see so many cool things out there that you won't see in other locations, and so much natural beauty that's amazing. Um, grab a car, drive around, and just stop by all the random shops, and you'll find cool shit. Yeah, man. I, I just yeah, I'm really looking forward to going there. Mm. Uh, we've got to make it happen. Well, where are we at the questions? We might. Knock another one. Yeah, hold that thought. Yep. You can talk now. All right. So we've got the we've got the band starting, which is inconvenient. So anyone got any other questions before our batteries run out? <clears throat> We're sitting here on Enmore Road, and there's a band about to start. He's doing his sound check at the moment. Drunk guy, obviously, uh, tripped over the power cable. No, that was just me forgetting to put a new battery in. Oh, thanks, Jim. Bloody legend. Well, you don't don't want a question for your five bucks. <laughs> well, I'm I'm very impressed with uh, Sydney's 5G network making this happen without any glitches. So, uh, yeah, cop that, Lyle. <laughs> 5G after all. So yeah, I was watching the. Um, the barman went in to grab a beer and um, he was stirring a cocktail for like a whole minute, like one glass. Now, everyone's standing there in just disbelief, like, he's taking the piss, isn't he? There were six people at the bar and it took me 15, 20 minutes just to get two beers. What the hell? 
One tech I watch has a side job building amp kits for customers. I don't know how he makes money. Oh, he probably doesn't need to. A lot of the techs that are scraping the bottom of the barrel price-wise, they're, um, they're retired. They, they don't really have any overheads. And you can afford to charge nothing when you've got no overheads. You can afford to um, basically barely charge for your time. Um, but the problem is that that's not a realistic indication of the market. And um, if you've got a bloke like that lo local who actually really cares about his work, then take advantage of it where you can. But it won't last forever. And um, that's not a realistic expectation out of other techs. Just because they've got no overheads and they're retired doesn't mean everyone else can have no overheads and be retired as well. So. Oh, yeah. Point in the conversation. <laughs> uh, we're just talking about um, one tech. Jerry watches yep. as a side job building amp kits for customers. I don't know how he makes money, and that's that's probably how he doesn't need to. So. Yeah. As long as they cover their costs, make a little bit for their <coughs> bottle yeah. of wine. And for something like that, it is one of those things where these people are doing it just as kind of a hobby to make a few extra dollars on the side. It's different to doing it as a job or as a career. You know, it's uh, some people do it as like a side hustle. Yeah. yeah, and that's fine. Um, oh shit, bike just fell over. Point. <laughs> that's fine. Do it as a side hustle. Go for it. But um, yeah. If just don't fuck up customers' amps. Well, yeah, that's the top priority. But if if demand increases, you got to make a decision. Are you going to take it? Are you going to go for it? Are you going to make the leap? Or are you just going to keep it how it is? And there will be constant pressure if you're good to take on more work. There will never be not enough work if you've got it what you do. As soon as word gets around, you just you're gonna be bat batting them off with a stick. Oh, it's, that's poor choice of words. <laughs> I don't bat them off, that's not part of my services. But hey, you know, if I do that, like you could help me with the OnlyFans page and <laughs> So anyway, Legends, what do you reckon we leave it there? Hey, there's one more question, what is oh, yeah. it? I'm what about making a production amp? I'm working on one at the moment. It's not so much a production amp, but a small run, maybe five of them. Stay posted, Alex. I'll talk to you about it off stream because I might have a question or two for you, actually. And I, I do have something in the works. Hey, we've something. both got something up our sleeve, mate. Yeah. Only time will tell. Exactly. Oh. But, you know, it's a, it's a le lesser, um, you know, it's a lesser um, priority for me because... You know, I got the shop, I got all that, I got people's products to sell, and if I'm going to do it, I'm going to do it in a way that fits a niche that I want to fill. Yeah. My deals for resale come from, oh, come about at tag sales, flea markets, and in the past anyway, ham radio fest, mm -hmm. West Electric tube speakers, amps, Catalan radios, ribbon mics, yeah, RCA tube broadcast console, bloody hell good, and that's a, quite a haul. Nice. I'd be uh, pretty pretty happy with that one. And that's the thing, over over in the States, you've got all this kind of stuff, whereas here in Australia, you're lucky if you find like a half beaten up like 80s solid state amp, you're yeah. lucky. <laughs> I just realised this has been monitoring the whole time. <laughs> Spitting out the speakers. Oh, there we go. We couldn't hear it from the uh, oh, screen noise. Oh, you're still the time. Rax effects. Maybe interested in one of your amps, Brad. Are you Aussie? No. I thought you were, oh, no, that's Euro. Oh, I've got 1,500 to 1500 euros to spend, so that's like, what, 50,000 yeah. 50, Australian dollars? Yeah. <laughs> about about, about 2,800. So I'm working on something at the moment, which is essentially uh, black face fender on one channel, tweed on the other, two different phase inverters. We're going to see how that works. I got inspired by the orange AD30, and I'm running with it. Let's see if I fall down with it. <laughs> Time will tell. That's oh, alright, I've got my beer in your way. That's alright. Just confiscate it. <laughs> so, we might leave it there, Legends. Um, oh, hang on. Gaz Cal's got it. Oh no, that's just the thanks for the info, advice, and insight. Thanks, mate. Bloody that's legend. what we do. Yeah. I mean, we should probably tee up some more of these kinds of things in future, like in the actual like workshops or yeah. something like that. Um, I had a. Shut up, dickhead. <laughs> no one cares about your shit box. Yeah, exactly. Um, we might do one in your workshop. What do you reckon? Because I had a few questions before. One from mm -hmm. Molly, yeah. Fretronics. He was uh, asking, he wants a tour of your workshop. So we might... That's going to be hard. <laughs> no, because the um, where it's located and how it is, 
there's like no 4G signal and there's no uh, physical internet connection. Oh, you got no internet. Nah. Uh, we might have to do a video on that one, maybe yeah. not so much uh, chat, uh, not live, just do a video tour and we'll talk shit. Yeah. I mean, we bounce off each other. Yeah, and this and there is one thing that I do, like, I've been trying, I've been, I've been poking at him to so we can start doing a couple of, like, videos together. Yeah. But, like, if any of you guys seen, like, things like Donut Media and whatnot, imagine those kinds of videos where it's, like, looking at various bits and pieces of uh, wonderful crap tech, yeah. wonderful things out there. I'm just going to surprise you with a bunch of that shit. Yeah. Then I'm going to pull it apart and look at it. A little bit like Big Clive just taking apart trash. <laughs> kind of, yeah. But then Your again, trash. is it good or is it good trash or bad trash? Oh, sometimes when it's bad, it's more interesting. Yeah. Like, how the hell did they make this thing even work for a dollar fifty? Exactly. <laughs> and how badly is this thing going to absolutely yeah. electrocute you? Like the Dan Electro stuff. Um, <laughs> the the uh, yeah, there's a lot of just trinket type shit we could take apart for fun. Oh yeah, I'm just I'm just gonna I'm just gonna I'm gonna start buying a whole bunch of stuff from Wish. Wish. <laughs> oh, oh yeah, you gotta be careful with the Wish stuff. It might be a sex toy. Maybe. <laughs> hey, it's all right. I'm sure yeah, there's something out there that'll be Actually, like absolutely hilarious. That reminds me of a comment I saw earlier yeah. and I forgot to click on. Ah. Um, this would be a good way of uh, going back. So, Gooden, where's your comment? Uh, wasn't that far back, was it? Yeah, it was. It was miles oh, Jesus. Back. Essentially, he was... Uh, so, Gooden goes through... Uh, here we go. So, Gooden says, rooting through a barn. Yeah. So, Gooden does the barn finds. He uh, digs yeah. out the gold, finds pure gold. Nice. Fixes it up, sells it on. Yeah. Bloody good on you. Rooting through a barn... It was bad. Uh, Is that Megadeth? Yeah. <laughs> Rooting through a barn owned by a former sound and lighting tech for Broadway shows. He had tubes, amps, speaker cabs, etc. And I found something <laughs> tubular in a sock. It was not a valve. It was a strap-on. It was a strap-on. So uh, did you, did you uh, recondition that one, Gooden, and sell it on, mate? <laughs> I know you're that type. Uh, no, there, was there was something down the bottom. What was, what was Thanks going for on joining us, Gooden. Every time we, uh, we appreciate your presence. New England is both blessed and cursed. Uh, blessed because barns are everywhere and Yankees are too thrifty to throw anything away. Yeah, but cursed as rust bugs and mouse crap are often part of the deal. Yeah, I've, I've had to turn a few amps away recently because they've just been too filthy. Um, one was full of cockroaches. Oh, uh, yeah. A pedal. It was an Ibanez tube screen full of, full of cockroaches. I just gave it back to the bloke. See, see for me, it's always the um, the digital pianos and the synths that are just filled with cockroaches and the PCBs get completely destroyed, especially the key much. contact ones. Yeah, it's um, now I just don't let it in my bench because you don't know if they're going to bloody spill eggs out and shit. It's just gross too. Like Dr. Gear X. <laughs> it's a automaton. It's a automaton. <laughs> They're those weird sperm-looking um, musical instrument things from Japan. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, it's like a saxophone. Yeah. Looks like a saxophone yeah. crossed with a sperm. Yeah, yeah. and it, uh, its cool. mouth opens. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. They're, they're, they're kind of cool. I didn't know it had a name. I thought it was just yeah. a toy. Now, nah, automaton. Right now I'm cool, and then like for sure I'd get. Yeah, like, like, I definitely, de we definitely, yes. definitely want, definitely should do some more of these kinds of things definitely, if people want to do it. Definitely, definitely, yeah, definitely. That definitely. That was Rain Man reference. Definitely. If people like this kind of thing and whatnot, we'll probably tee them up so we can do some more around the time when the <laughs> Yanks are floating around and whatnot. Yeah, yeah. And during uh, during the yeah. early morning. Today, Sunday's always a busy day for live streams. You've got Lyle in the morning when he mm. decides to do them. You've got Big Clive after that. Um, and today, mm. I think, or yesterday, was also Tone Talk. Yeah, so it can be a pretty chock a block day. But well, we could also do like some pre film stuff, like get people to send us in some questions and we yeah. can go through and do like a QA type thing as well. That's a good point. When it gets to the real technical stuff, mm. then we can do some research first so we're not talking out <laughs> our ass. <laughs> no, no, you gotta, gotta talk out your ass. That's, you know, that's what the best people do on the internet. Yeah. That's what people on the forums do. That's what people wanna hear. If you talk out of your ass with authority, you, you're now an authority. <laughs> Facts have nothing over confidence. Yeah. Yeah. That's all it's about. Anyway, all right, champions, I'll leave it there. Take it easy. Thanks for joining us. 